February 4th, 2012, and this is The Talking Dead, and I'm Jason. This is Paul. Oh, you bastard! <laughs> this is Paul, in front of the microphone, properly. <laughs> I guess this is Bob. <laughs> Not being proper. I mean, I know this is Bob, but I mean, like, I guess I'm next. <laughs> you don't know it's, it's you. Yeah. Well, we're back together again. It's been, what, a couple weeks since we've couple all weeks. been together? Yeah. You know, we took a break last guys. week because I had, I had to fix some technical issues that we had. But they're they're all fixed now. So what's yeah. new? What's new, Bob? Not a whole lot. Missed you guys. Oh, group hug. No. No. <laughs> that's it. That's all, that's all y'all got. I, this show is starting yeah, off very uh, nicely. Uh, y'all were just um, talking just fine before the show. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna be moving. All right. Well, it's not on the agenda here, but I'll tell you what I did that was cool this week. I went to the um. I went to the Kevin Smith live from behind because I'm a Kevin Smith fanboy. And, and I went and I saw him do a live streaming Q&A, Jay and Silent Bob get old. And it was kind of neat. Yeah. It was a three-hour show. The tickets were 15 bucks, And it was, it was a three-hour show. And uh, when you consider you pay like 10 or 12 for a movie. Right. And then like stuff that's 3D, more than that. Don't talk, and, uh, don't talk trash about 3D. I'm just saying but it's, it was a, it's an additional cost. <laughs> And uh, and it was hilarious. It was fall down funny, and and uh, and it was great. And uh, and then they, at the end, they did some uh, some Q and A type stuff, and he talked about this alternate ending to Red State that would have been cool. And um, and somebody asked him about the um, and we remember we were talking about this on a previous episode. Kevin Smith is not ripping you off. Yes. And um, and somebody asked him about. His uh, thoughts on the Sopa Pipa acts, right. you know, where he stood on that. And he was like, uh, again, I, I, I really like where he's going and his thoughts on the matter. Because he said that as a, as a person who holds intellectual property, he understands why you wouldn't want to pirate it, right? Pirating is bad. Right, right. And he's like, but why would I be worried about piracy? He's like, right now I'm giving away my content for free. It's yeah. on the internet. It's free. He's like, well, and he's like, but like, you know, having said that, I'm glad you guys paid the money to show up because yeah. that's how I decided to make money. It's the, we live in an age of try before you buy. And that's true. I mean, I think we talked about this. We talked about this we last did. episode. We did. We did. The one right, yeah. His his, his sentiment, and, and having listened to the last show, his sentiments echoed yours exactly. Yeah. I want to try it before I buy it. And that's the world we live in right now. And, and and there's seriously nothing wrong with that, as long as, I mean, there's that there's that word that we should carry on no matter what digital age, you know, golden age, whatever. It's called integrity. You know, you you got to keep your integrity. You got you have to keep your values and everything that you do just because it's digital and it's easy and it becomes convenient doesn't mean that you should throw away your morals and your values and you know you, you got to have integrity if you're if you're going to rip shit off if you're going to take it for free you you need to pay it back in yeah. some form whether well, it's not for the same album but for you know I remember in, in with regards to music in particular um well, if it's not for the same album, then it would have to be double the next album. Well, it's something. I mean, yeah, like I mean, it's like you buy the album, but when you go to the show, you buy an extra shirt or yeah, something. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, you, you. Um, but when iTunes I mean, launched, Paul, I've never bought an album from him, but I've all of his shit. Got them all. <laughs> <laughs> Paul now has to give his shit away for free. <laughs> um, but that's not a bad business model. As I mean, is shown. Well, it is to the point that I'm now losing my apartment and having to move. Into, that's because you're a heroin addict. Yeah, well, that's true. I, which is weird because I'm like the only fat one on the street. I mean, <laughs> cops never knew. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, so so there's a, but there's the the rub. And um, so what I was gonna say was that the whole iTunes model was predicated on people would buy it. People would go, you know, like when they said, like, yeah. why would people pay a dollar for that when they could download it for free? And they were like, no. People will do it. People yeah. will pay a dollar for something that they. Well, that they time like. and time again, they've shown that if you make it easy, if you make it reasonable, people will pay for it. Yeah, I mean, because this idea that everybody downloads, for, you know, rips pirate. Everybody uses Pirate Bay or whatever. 
you no, know, some people do. Yeah, some people do. But I think, I mean, it, time after time, they've shown if you make a business model that is reasonable and doesn't feel like the person making the purchase is being ripped off, they'll pay for it. Well, you know, also it, too, you just have to make it convenient. It, well, yeah, but in, in, and you're right. And in any in any kind of like social system like that, it, it's going to be a spectrum of behavior. And yeah. you're always going to yeah. have those guys that they're called free riders, and yeah. they're always going to be there. You're, you're no matter gonna, what you do, you're no not going to get rid what. of them. Yeah. They're just they're just the worst example, and they're yeah. they're, they're just. They're, but but I think eventually we're going to move to where they're they're more and more outliers and not. Um, you know, not the norm. And, you know, as far as like making money on your, on your craft, you know, what you do, I, I don't know the answer to that. And, yeah. and, um, and maybe there's an answer out there somewhere. Like maybe you got to be on stage and set your hair on fire and that'd get people right. to show up. Right. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah. But, but to think that, that you're going to. That only gonna, works for one show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can only no. do this once. <laughs> I mean, however, the healing it, process can go the whole tour. So. MJ did it once for Pepsi. Yeah. I mean. But um, but I don't know. Like I mean, so so what we have to do now is think of of new business models or well, new I, ways I think, to. I think some of it is also what level of success you get into it at, like when you're starting out. Like someone tells me at work all the time. Uh, there's so and so this rapper and he gives all his stuff away for free but he's making all this money but he's also like I don't know he's on some show like community or something like that right and it's like that's great but that guy's already known what you know <laughs> and and they'll say things like some people say things to me like well you know Trent Reznor advocates this model because he put the last album up and it made x million dollars in 3 weeks and it that's great, but everybody already knows who the fuck Trent Reznor is. Oh, absolutely. Right, but, right, 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 right. But, the, but the thing so, is... So uh, there's there's going to be a certain percentage, always, of people who are going to pay, which is great, and people who are going to steal. Yeah. The problem is when you get lower, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. you can no longer scrape by on that percentage because you're just not making enough. But but the, the flips... The, the, the the thing that okay yes the what separates people from who gives it away and it and it doesn't hurt their pocket and there's the, you know the people who give you know don't want to give it away because they can't afford it there's one thing that there's a common denominator between all of those people and that's the fact that their whole they have their their craft their love and they're constantly putting it out there. They're constantly putting it in front of people. And the more people, the more times you put it out there, the more, you you know, you can pick up one or two people and you constantly, like Trent Reznor, when we were a kid, nobody gave a fuck about Trent Reznor. When, no. we, when we talked about him playing in Pig Face, when we, you know, we were listening to him in Pig Face, when Nine Inch Nails first came out, back even back in ministry, nobody cared about it. Nobody, you know, yeah. people were, if, if MP3s were as popular then, um, I don't. I don't think it would change the fact that you know it, it starts off small. Oh yeah, and then eventually you get to the point where. Um, yeah. Well, it's also harder to get to that point now because the amount, and it's there's nothing wrong with this, but you know, everybody's doing whatever their craft is. There are so many people out now because it's, oh, it's yeah. easier to do. But I, you I, know, I things think, are more accessible. So, you know, whereas before you only had a choice of. X hundred bands to listen to. Listen. Now you have five hundred thousand to choose from. Everybody's a fucking band. Yeah, I and mean, you know, wait, and and, that's, so, and and that has nothing to do with stealing. I'm just saying. No, no. The other part of it, the reason that it's it's hard to you know when you're on the bottom to make money, uh, is that there's you know a thousand percent more competition now. Yeah, and but but that doesn't change the fact. I mean, if if you think if you judge your success on comparing to people who already have mainstream success, then you're going to fail. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm, you, not, you, I'm, you, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm well, just saying this is another piece of the Well, I know, but I'm just saying you, you, you have to judge your success on the level of your audience, yeah. of, of your reach. Of your, I mean, I mean, because look, look you, how many you, podcasters you are out there. Out, but <laughs> it's, it's so competitive out there. Uh, and that's you know, when, that's I mean, when the content. How many Nails albums are out? There's what? Well, you know, I, mean, I think I that. Know, um, I don't even know how many. I'll be releasing my 10th album soon, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I've never, I've made like 35 bucks. So I mean, it's, it, which, which is fine. I'm saying you can constantly put it out, but that doesn't but, guarantee. But putting it out without any, any, 
model to promote it other than tell yeah. people on Facebook and tell yeah, people yeah, on yeah. one or two other places is not is it does not get it out there. If you, if if every single day you spent an hour doing nothing but writing people and saying here, here this is my music this is my music do yeah. this do this eventually yeah. it, you know it it'd get more and more I mean that's what you're but doing I, have I to mean work a full time job. Yeah, I mean everybody does. <laughs> you know, I mean it, it gets But even little... but even uh, I mean, what I'm saying is like it, even on your lunch break, you could pull up and send out emails Actually, and I stuff. Could, well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, if if it's that important to a person, I'm not just saying you, but right, just in right. general, if it's that important to a person, getting it out in front of people as much yeah. as possible. I mean, the Grateful Dead. One of the one of the things that people say why they became such a big following is because they constantly put free albums in people's yeah. hands. Whether that will work with everybody, we know it doesn't because if it did, then we would have a 10,000 Grateful Dead. But yeah. that concept is still Instead true no matter. the Grateful Dead and Fish. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and what, but, string but, cheese incident? Or are they in the same thing? I've never heard them. But, but, but so that, it's, but it's that concept. for like two people. Yeah, <laughs> but that concept does work for everyone though. The more you put it out there, you mean you, just because you don't Warner Brothers not knocking on your door doesn't mean that in your well, local town. Well, that, I know, but, but yeah. I'm just saying it doesn't mean that in wherever you're you're marketing and pushing it and your biggest pushes, wherever your your biggest reaches, you're popular. People are going to buy your albums when they come out. People are going to you know whatever it may be, t-shirts, whatever. I, I you know I I think that it's like um it, especially with talking about podcasting, um. I don't feel like I'm in competition with any podcast out there yeah. at all, at all. I feel like we're all doing the same thing. Yep. And and it's sort of like you're just kind of trying to figure out a way to get noticed. But I, I well, definitely do not see the other guys well, we as don't competition. Promote. Well, we don't, that, that, but we don't. That's kind of how the music scene is. I mean, but there, so, there are, so there what are you got to do is figure out how to get noticed. doing something really original, you know. And I'm not one of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but you are. I mean, the, the that might be that, one of those PR problems. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't advertise this show. We do. We do our small circles. But so, so thinking more about about podcasting, when we when we had the chance, when you brought up the idea of doing the um, the atheism skepticism podcast, non religious life. I I, used, I listen to Reasonable Doubts and Skeptics Guide to the Universe and Free Thought Radio. Right, I listen to all those podcasts, and 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 when it got put in front of me a chance to do it, I was like, yeah, I want to do that too, man. I I, I want to swim in that pool, and I don't really I, I don't really care that I'm going to make money from it. I just want to do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, make time every week to just do it. Yeah. And, 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 and what the weird thing is like, it's getting noticed people. I'm not seeing any money from it, certainly, but, right. um, but people, because notice. I keep it all. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. Jason keeps it all. He, Just, he's he's hiding it away from my college fund. I can't believe he's wearing Gucci <laughs> pants. When I, when, I know, when I turn 18, That's he's going to, I'll get my inheritance. The trust fund keep, opens my, up. My zombie popcorn shoes that are falling apart with yeah. holes. And I, I, I realize that there, yeah. there's holes in them now. I've worn them so much. With your it's Dolce and outside. Gabbana belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, you know, like I, 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 I would love for everybody to make money on, on their albums or their, you know, their craft. Like, like you say, in, in, in uh, but, I, 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 I sort of sincerely believe that if you approach it, like this is how I need to pay the bills. Not, this is what I love. And it's like the cart before the horse, man. Yeah, because it, 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 it no well, longer beca- problem, it no, no longer becomes a labor of love. It becomes a labor of labor of necessity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm well, just... if if you if you approach <clears throat> any kind of art that you make with the thought that this is how I need to pay the bills. It, it no longer becomes art. Then it's just comedy. Then it's a job. Yeah. So, well, no, I mean, it, it's always a job. I mean, it's oh, none of it's easy. Yeah, and well. It's always work. Oh, yeah, y'all, you know? y'all are working hard right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, this isn't hard work, but I did have to drive like half an hour no, in, in a uh, storm to get here. So that part was They work. almost didn't make it, man. Yeah, it was, They almost died. They skid off the road three times. It's like the Donner Party. Actually, <laughs> I did uh, downtown. Some guy threw uh, a whole bunch of water because he had a had a yellow like Camaro with flames. I thought he was just out there with a no, bucket. No, no, no. And he drove and a puddle hit and it all went on the windshield, you know, and I couldn't see. And I actually almost hit a parked car. So, But you know what happened today yeah. at GW Marketplace? An old man caught on fire. They shut really? the place down. 
Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. Your day yeah. could be worse. <laughs> yeah, you have a, a grocery store story to tell. That's it. Yeah, that's the grocery store. How did you don't old man... you don't just go like yeah, don't mean fire. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty casual. <laughs> Why can't I do it that way? I need more, man. Okay. Today around two forty-five, an old man went to the bathroom in GW Marketplace. He accidentally caught on fire. Would you would you take a flashlight and hold it under your chin when you do that? So no, that's what happened. He went in the bathroom and accidentally he, caught on fire. Like, How do you accidentally I, catch on fire? That is the part of the story that I don't know about. I was oh combustion. <laughs> yeah. I have it's guessed. True, it really happens. My God, this hurts. <laughs> I really don't know. The, no. all, all the article said because Miley called me and she was like, "Were you guys there?" I wasn't. I was at work. Uh, Miley called me and she's like, "Oh my God, there's like all these cops and they got." The grocery store roped off and it's closed down. You can't go in. So I did a Google search. Nothing was on there. About 45 minutes later, news started popping up about it. So I read about it and then just wow. said, an elderly man went into the bathroom of the grocery store and caught on fire. Auto erotic pyro. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Now we're going to hear the people talk about what is that spontaneous human combustion? No, it probably was. Probably was crack. Probably crack or the malfunction of the hand dryer. I don't. I really don't know. Right. I mean, I don't know. But like the Walmart store, mounting the air. The hand <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do you? What do you do to that? Damn these fleece pants. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So that's 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 the. So did they say is he okay? Is he the he hospital? He said that he was burned. That he was rushed to the hospital. Um, yeah. And that was it. You know, typical Norfolk wow. um, reporting. Bathroom burns. That's gotta suck. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know what happened. Other than that, crazy. That's it. So moving on, because <laughs> that was just our intro. Mm -hmm. We re redid the zombie popcorn studio area. Um, it's more convenient. Zombie popcorn headquarters. And guess what? We'll go on the site tonight and be ready first thing in the morning. I don't know what. Natural one. Oh really? It starts a new podcast for the Zombie Popcorn Network. Oh yeah, that one. starts. Oh shit! Tonight, I totally dropped the ball. What'd you do? I was supposed to send you an email about. I was supposed the music. to record the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we recorded, but I was supposed to send you an email for uh, some tweaks for the music. <laughs> I get. I haven't listened to it. He sent a it to late me. The game. Oh my god! I'm so. I right. he sent it to me today, so I got it, and it's going to go up tonight. He, so <laughs> while I've got you, right, yeah. <laughs> um, hang on. <laughs> yeah, he loved the music. Oh, good. He, lo good. he loved the intro music, but um, he wanted me to ask you but if we what? could. But well, what? at the end, there's like a sound of a yeah. yeah. But he's not <laughs> gonna a pay you. Horse. And like an eagle or something. Yeah, I put it in to be cheesy. Just yeah, I can take him out. That he was asking for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it starts off with an eagle cry because I mean. It's well, it, it reminds me. Yeah. It reminds me of the Colbert I, Report, where the eagle yeah. swoops in. <laughs> but love, for the I listeners who don't know, podcast is like, dude, that's a little gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the natural one is a D and D. Um, Have you listened playcast. to it? I haven't listened. To it. I just got it today at work. So. Oh, cool. Um, I haven't listened to it, so I'll, I'll obviously listen to it when I'm. We had, we had fun. We had a fun time doing it, but I think that Matt has. And it was fun. We had a, I had a lot of fun doing mm -hmm. it, and it was it was pretty cool. And I'm sure it'll. I'm, yeah, I hope it turns out good. It's going to come out every week, every um, Saturday. We're going to put up a new. But I think that he, like, I don't. I think the idea of like editing or audio editing like just blows his mind. Why? Because he would, like, we we were starting to to play the game, but he was like, "Oh, I got to say this." And he's like, "All right, we got to start all over," <laughs> and I'm like. Dude, you could say it any time. It's a recording. <laughs> you could, you could like say like, yeah, here I am, just before these jackasses start doing, you know, you could say whatever, yeah. and then it's just like, like the move it in front. Non-linear <laughs> audio edit. You know. It's easier to do it non, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like uh, that's why everybody moved to it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just think that it was just kind of funny. Like that it was sort of like he was like, "Oh yeah, I can do that." <laughs> <laughs> so, so this podcast, I haven't listened to it yet. It's gonna be like. Hey, I remember, uh, it's just going to be all different. <laughs> yeah. Or it'll be all done in one take and everything will be scripted. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. It was pretty funny. But, you know, and it was funny too. In the, I, don't know, I don't know how many D&D &D, like, nerds are out there, but we had maybe everybody rolled natural once 
Everybody really? it. Was, I mean, we all suck. We're just like, wow. eh. and we and um, I guess I should send you the pictures because we took pictures of everybody doing their natural one face. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. So, I'm excited about it. I'll listen to it to be up on the site. I was watching a Futurama episode the other day, uh, where Bender becomes addicted to uh, Dungeons and Dragons. That was one. That was one of the full length movies. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was Bender's game. Bender's game. Yeah. yeah. So what? Making fun of the Orson Scott. What the Ender's game? That was it. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was funny. Yeah. That's it. That's, <laughs> That's, all, it. That's all you. Yeah. There you go. Did you ever see that? It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> What's next? But you know, you know I what? I, you know what? I, awesome. I, uh, <laughs> what I did see last night that was somewhat awesome was the Devil Inside. When did you go see that last you, night? Did you like it? Because it, it got really crappy reviews. It totally got crappy reviews, and we you saw it too, right? No, no. No, I, you saw I, it. I got the reviews. Actually, I never heard the reviews. I just came over. Oh. And you were like, "It sucks, dude." They said, "No, you didn't say no." But the, you say but the reviews said it was bad. All the reviews I read were saying like it's the worst shaky cam movie ever. But I mean, they history. say that about our show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't even move That's the cam. <laughs> Damn. Like, why is that one camera so high and the other one's up? <laughs> why does Paul nose? always look like? <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> there's only one person that says that. Um, no, but it was, it was decent. It wasn't the best movie and I'm not going to add it to my collection or anything, but it it was, it was entertaining. It was fun. You're not going to download it for free. Oh, I might. No, (laughs) (laughs) I won't do that either. Um, but it was fun. It was, it was a good exorcism movie. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of Bob Larson in parts. It was fun. So cool. I I would wait. If you want to see it, I would wait for Netflix, um, for it to come out on that. It's definitely, we saw it. At the cinema cafe for like what was it five bucks or whatever? Yeah, um, and it, it was it was worth that price. It was definitely worth mm-hmm. that. It was fun. Um, there was a there was like a sixteen year old kid sitting in front of us, and it was scaring the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. So I understand that one of the things that they do is that there isn't much CGI. Like all the contortions that the possessed person is going through is really was really a person just sort of bent around i I would not yeah it's a little freaky but you know there it is i mean like that in the uh the last exorcism that's the movie that i was thinking that you saw that's good yeah that one's good i recommend that one yeah yeah. we talked about it they're making a scene yeah that's that's why i was thinking that you saw this so it wasn't the last exorcism that's what he said (laughs) because when we were talking about he's like they need to change the yeah i was gonna say by (laughs) default they need to change the name too (laughs) First one, the previously, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, but um, the devil inside was is decent. It was, <laughs> it was good. It, it wasn't great, but it was yeah. it was entertaining. So that's that's, that's the, cool. That's that's my review of it. But there is there is a movie that looks fucking awesome, um, and that's the uh, the woman in black. Have you seen the trailers for that? I have. It is, Dude, I've been telling you about this movie every week. I here. know. We're talking about and it. And you're now. always like, what was that? It, it looks like, amazing. Oh, we almost went to go it. see it last night. Yeah, it, um, yeah, we thought about it too. But it, it actually looks really amazing. It's spooky as shit. Yeah, it looks good. Um, Play so we can... Plus, I mean, Harry Potter. Yeah. It's all grown up. Looking good, dude. Did you see him on Saturday Night Live? No. I didn't yeah, remember. But this, the, I mean, this this film is is really creepy. Uh, it's like do you want to tell the ghost story? Yeah, that's that's a right. Great, I, I mean, who doesn't love good ghost stories, man? Like, there's like I think those are, you know, like so often in in horror, we need things that are like, you know, slashers. And yeah. Not that not that I have anything wrong with the slasher movie, but it is its own thing. But but I think it it sort of like eclipsed the ghost story. Yeah. yeah. Ghost stories are great. Yeah, I mean, we just I rewatched the others uh, a couple days ago. That's a good movie. Such an awesome movie. But yeah, you you know what though? I think that the others would would be the the others would have put Alejandro Amenabar on the map, like M Night Shyamalan had the others come out first. Maybe yeah. You know what I mean? Because because Amenabar is a much better director. He's he's got a much more um, distinct and prestigious filmography. Whereas I think M Night Shyamalan was a one trick pony, and, and he's just kind of 
slide. And every movie ever since yeah. Sixth Sense has been like a subsequent decline of of suck. Um, yeah. What's I gonna say? Uh, oh, he also wrote the music. Oh, really? Avenabar yeah. did the music yeah. too. Yeah. Ah, there you go, talented guy. Yeah, I was like, you fucking piece. <clears throat> <laughs> no. Oh. no, it's good music too. Yeah, and it's one of the few movies that Nicole Kidman is good in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know. Mean, I, I think she's know, talented. As, as she's... To, I mean, but she's usually just like I am cold and with no emotion. And it's just <laughs> kind of what she has there until she has her like screaming fits. Uh, that's a fantastic movie. Yeah. So I, I'm looking forward to the woman in. Who directs the woman in black? Do we know? Um. I, d- I don't I don't I, don't I didn't know. write it down. Yeah. God. Where's your magic brick? <laughs> yeah, Hold really. On. Where's that? Um. So anyway, uh, Daniel Radcliffe hosted Saturday Night Live uh-huh. recently, and he was it was kind of funny. I mean, Saturday Night Live is one of those shows; it's up and down. Yeah, it's it. And Radcliffe was on it, but one of the things I noticed about Radcliffe is he's little. He is a little <laughs> guy. Even the little guys on Saturday Night Live look bigger wow. than he did. Really? Yeah, he's little. What do you think of the Chronicle? Um, that's playing now. Yeah, well, trailer looks pretty good too. I think it's a great idea. I think it's really. You want to talk about the premise of the movie? Um, it's found footage, but it's a superhero movie where <laughs> oh yeah, three cool. friends, um, somehow they get like I don't know, they touch a meteor or something, and they get superpowers, and and so the the gist of the film is them sort of discovering their powers and Mm -hmm. then one of them goes Vader and they have to deal with it. Which would totally happen. Yeah, sure it would. (laughs) I think of the three, I would be the one to snap. (laughs) Really? (laughs) We all, yeah. Why would you snap? Oh my gosh. I I don't know. I'm just guessing. Maybe I wouldn't. (laughs) You're you're so wishy-washy. I know. (laughs) I'm a flip-flopper. You're a (laughs) flip-flopper. Uh, I can't get this trailer to play, so fuck it. There we go. Oh, not really. Speaking of found footage movies, uh, actually, no, it wasn't a found footage movie. Never mind. Which film? I, I don't know. That movie just made me think of the movie Troll Hunter. And I don't know well, why. Well, that wasn't found footage, but it had but that documentary right, style. Right. Yeah, yeah, they found. No, they did. They were they were filming a documentary, and then this was the, the footage was found. Uh, a, a while later. Have you seen that? What is it? Troll Hunter? No, but we t- we talked about it on the side a lot. Oh, it's good. It, it looks good. Yeah, it's really good. It's a Norwegian film, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. They're supposed to do a, an American remake of it. Are they really? Yeah. You know they do it every time. Any yeah, Anytime so. a foreign film gets it's good. Slightly successful. Holy yeah. crap. Woman in Black is a Hammer film. That's right. That's we, I did know that. We talked about that. Yeah. That's, That's not, cool. Yeah. What's the other one we talked about? Uh... Shit, was it like Wake Forest or Wakewood or Wakewood, something? Wakewood, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, looks, that looks good, too. Who brought well, they, Hammer they, back? I thought Hammer's they, been back. I mean, they've back. always been around, but, uh, you know, they... Was, was Let Me In the remake of Hammer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Come on, man. Hammer is synonymous with, like, awesome horror yeah. movies, so that and, now I have and, more and faith white, in White this. negligees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Hello, Ingrid... Uh, but yeah, no, Hammer's been putting out some good stuff recently. They, yeah. they, they, their debut film of their return was uh, Let Me In. Really? That was a Hammer movie? Yeah. And there was something else. Awesome. There was like a thriller. And then there was... Uh, Wakewood. And then Wake there was... Uh, there was something else. I know. There. I, but there, there's a lot of them. And they're, they're bringing back one of the films that I have on the Zombie Popcorn YouTube page. Um, they're doing a remake of it. Uh because it totally makes you feel better than like the Kiss reunion or you yeah. know yeah. something <laughs> like that. Like, like that makes you think oh, the world is total shit and we're all gonna die. Yeah. Uh, Hammer coming back is like, oh, you know what? Things aren't that fucked up. Hammer's still around. Hammer's still around and still putting out good quality yeah. stuff. Um, speaking of Hammer related, Christopher Lee um, was in the oh, was reboot in- of Wicker Tree. That just came out last Friday, right. but it was only in, in, in selected theaters. And something else we just watched. Uh, hey, Jen, what did we watch that Christopher Lee was in recently? It was that movie. Yeah, that movie with him in it. <laughs> with that guy. <laughs> but the the reviews for The Wicker Tree, um, a couple of reviews that I read, were not positive about it. It was just saying it was 
pretty much it it lacked he was in Hugo oh that's right yeah and which is an awesome movie and 3D yeah Hugo was yeah, nice yeah we didn't see it in 3D but then you didn't see an awesome movie yeah <laughs> but um the reviews for Wicker Tree uh people said that it just didn't have the element um that it's the first one to. had had that you know that mysterious because everybody knows what's going to happen yeah the well the first one's like one of those movies where you know you make something and it just works out that way yeah and you can't recapture that and that's what some of the reviews are saying is like it just that ignoring the remake because everybody hates the remake um I've never watched the remake. Oh, you're not missing anything. No, I know. <laughs> but you're missing, way, you're missing like angry am. Nicolas Cage <laughs> punching <laughs> women in the face. <laughs> like the, uh, I'm sure we've talked it's about the this, bees. this before, but Conan O'Brien did a couple of yeah. scenes where uh, the new Homeland Security uh, system, instead of like yellow, orange, red, is a... Uh, a Nicolas Cage warning system, <laughs> and like when the you know Earth is melting down, it's the bees one, and they go they go through all those movies. It's pretty awesome. It's crazy, but yeah. So I still want to see it. It was only in selective release, you know, selected theaters. Um, because I still like the first one. Yeah. I, I don't mind seeing a modern version of it. But, great. Yeah, and I don't know why. It's just kind of weird. Have you? I'm it is. It is totally weird. Have y'all seen the trailer for Red Lights? No. It looks I did see good. It, it has Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver um, and I think and Robert De Niro. Yeah, Robert yeah, De Niro's in know, it. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of like uh, I'm a little. See, so so the premise in Red Lights is that is that it's Sigourney Weaver and Cillian Murphy. And they're they're paranormal investigators, and and and, and even in, in the trailer, it's you know she's like you know they have a they have no a, they're they're this, they're, they're, sp- sort of, they're supposed to be skeptic skeptic they are and they are they're debunkers yeah. they're like they're, they're 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 kind of like a version of James Randi yeah and and in fact they even show a bit in the trailer where um, uh, James Randi famously exposed Peter Popov because he was the faith healer. And he would walk around in the crowd and be like, is there a Susie Smith that lives on 613, you know, right, right. you know, Green Avenue? And, and, and you know, little Susie, like, oh, right over here. And what they found out was that Peter Popov, his wife and his staff were in the in the crowd gathering information about people. Well, yeah, I mean, and then he wore an earpiece. And so his wife would be in the in the control room feeding him the information through his earpiece. And so Randy and another guy who had some technical expertise, they totally blew the lid off Peter Popov. Mm-hmm. And, and the guy was a liar and a sham. He said he was getting this information from God above and, and, uh, and taking their money. And, and so Randy exposes him and so then he's gone for a couple of years and now he's back. He's, he's still doing his thing. I was totally healed by one of those guys. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I had acne, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But so my problem with Red Lights is that is that the Sigourney Weaver character and the Silly Murphy character, they're debunkers like that. And it's and it's this – I think from what I gather from the trailer, the idea is that, you know, they've gone around and they've exposed the Peter Popovs and the James Van Progs and the, um, the Sylvia Browns. But then they meet Robert De Niro's character, and he's real. And, and so what's wrong with that? I mean, it's, well, it's I mean, a fictitious for, movie. I know, but for a movie, it's... it's it, it, I mean, this is kind of like what The Last Exorcism is about. It, I know, it, it <laughs> kind of was. But I also really liked um, the, the Sherlock Holmes movie, right? You know, he goes through all that stuff, oh. and you think like, oh, man, you know, Sir Thomas Blackmore really has magic powers. And at the end, Holmes puts it all together in rationality... Right. Well, that's so basically I think, you're letting your personal feelings as a skeptic absolutely <laughs> yeah, override the fact that it is a fictitious movie. This is a story. I, <laughs> well, I, well, I, I kind of do. You just think like that because people are going to see it, they're going to go, "Holy shit!" John Edwards is totally real because Robert De Niro's character. Well, was actually, real. yeah, I kind of think they do because because what happens is everybody commits the um, 
the what's it called the the true Scotsman fallacy about it, where they're like, okay, all right, the Sylvia Brown, she's fake, or John Van Praagh, he's fake, but this guy's real, and the, and it carries over into real life. What I'd really like to see is. Then there hasn't been really any movie like that. And in fact, there was a movie called The Skeptic with Tim Daly in it, right. where it was exactly that. He like he like doesn't believe in the ghosts and everything, and then all of a sudden, like, yep, he's wrong, you know. So so they're like Hollywood is always using the skeptic and rationality as as the foil. Like they're always wrong. Yeah, there was yeah, a but that's movie, uh, and I could be wrong about this movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Did you watch the Adjustment Bureau? I hated that movie. I loved that movie, but <laughs> mostly because I, I like that New York is a character in the movie. I love any movie where the city almost plays a character. Come closer. It, uh, that was kind of neat, and I think Adjustment and, and Bureau I was well hats. done. Yeah, that was <laughs> um, kind of cool. But Riding on that madman thing. Yeah, I uh, I was going to ask if you liked it because that's kind of, you know, towards the end. It's like, oh, wait, this is, you know, they're all angels. Yeah, and, right. And... Uh, but seeing that hasn't changed my religious beliefs at all. So <laughs> well, I, don't, I, I don't, and I don't think it's going to change many people's religious. Well, beliefs I don't think unless they had those beliefs to begin with when they watched it. So Maybe. Well, uh, movies take advantage of that all the time. I mean, like which is funny, like the I, Devil Inside. Uh, we walked out of it, and I said it, that movie would have been scared because the, there were some people in there that were actually scared of that film. And I told Mary, I said that movie would would have been scarier if I believed in that shit. Yeah, right. It, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it would be. <laughs> But um, but having said but that, I do like watching. No, I know. I, I mean, I do like watching movies like that, like The Devil Inside or Paranormal Activity or I mean, any any ghost story. Yeah. And, but I like to play along, right? And uh, and at the end of the day, um, you know, a movie like Paranormal Activity, I think is is harmless in that, like, you know, I I know there's no such thing as ghosts, but it's fun to play along. And, uh, it's like the old going out in the woods afraid Jason Voorhees is going to be out there. Yeah. You no, know he's not really there, but you kind of have that inside you. Like, what I don't is know. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of on a soapbox a little bit about, <laughs> about red lights. I mean, uh, uh, not a little bit, a lot. It's um, killing time, so keep going. <laughs> um, I don't have anything to rant about. But so, not yet. <laughs> Adjustment Bureau, um, there, there's always like this darker side to it. And, uh, it, and, and, you know, one of the things I thought was the most interesting aspect of the Adjustment Bureau was sort of like the subtext that never gets explored. And it was that if you watch the movie, there's there's almost like like random chance, because that's what they would attribute these events to. Random chance was almost an agent into itself. Yeah. And it was working the whole movie on Matt Damon's side. But they never really went into that, you know, like like... And the whole the whole chain of events starts is because the one agent who's working for the adjustment bureau right. dozes off, like he falls asleep, and he, he you know and he misses his his appointed his time to make that yeah. that event happen that kept them apart. And then and then there's the scene where like they're being chased by the agents, and like a sudden gust of wind blows just mm-hmm. out of nowhere and knocks the guy's hat off, and then he can't go through the door. And uh. And so there was this idea that, like, you know, maybe there, there's, maybe there's another agency at work, right? Which I thought that was kind of interesting. But the whole thing about the adjustment bureau that just pisses me off, and, and this is just me on my secular soapbox, is that is that everybody talks about like, oh, it's the plan, you know, it's the plan. There's a plan for your life. There's a plan. Fuck the plan, man. I was never consulted about the plan. I didn't get any input on what my plan is. You think the guy in the adjustment bureau whose plan was to get hit by a car? Do you think that's well, the plan he wanted? <laughs> yes. Well, that's why I like the movie, because this plan is set, and the main character's like, no. I don't... Right, but what I'm happens, though, is that, that he's the only one who doesn't do that, and then the agency sort of capitulates, and then they're like, oh, well, here's a new plan. Yeah, right, but it's still he's on plan. Right. I don't want to be on plan. <laughs> if there's a plan, I don't think you have an option. <laughs> but that's the but that's the part of predestination that agitates me to no end is that I wasn't consulted. Even even if even if I well, that's part of the plan. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you don't get consulted. Yeah. That's why the concept of free will is so fun to explore, uh, because. You're supposed to have it, but you're not supposed to use it. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's kind of. 
it's, well, it's they, they, I mean, they talk about that in the movie too a little bit, where they where they say like, "Oh yeah, you get free will. You get to decide like what kind of toothpaste you." Yeah, buy. I love that. It's <laughs> just like you get you get shit, you know? Right. Yeah. But I I don't. But again, like you know, the plan is you know sure Matt Damon's plan, like he doesn't get the girl, but. You know, think about the other people. Like, how many people whose plan is it, you know, and, and now I'm thinking outside of the movie, but, you know, how many people's plan is it is to starve to death as a child in a third world country? Fuck that plan, man. Who makes that plan? I want to kick that guy in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, well, I don't think any of it's plan. I just think it's random luck. But Well, it is, right? It's, it's just that it's the, it's the, it's the, yeah. Blind circumstantial luck, and so that's and, that, and, and but that's the thing. Like with things like the adjustment bureau, those kind of like theistic notions, they get romanticized, and 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 nobody thinks beyond into the, like the darker side of it. We could talk about this on the other show. You want to come on? Yeah, <laughs> no, not really. I don't. I just don't. Care. Every Thursday <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, this non-religious life with Bob. So yeah. So what are you trying to say, Bob? Ah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't like the adjustment beer. <laughs> I, I can tell. I'm the exact opposite. I loved everything he hated about. It. Really? <laughs> yeah. Don't set too close. Yeah. Uh, he's. I loved it because he hated it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the only reason I saw it because I knew he hated Look, it. Look, Bob, I'm wearing my adjustment bureau t-shirt today. <laughs> Plus, it's based off of. Uh, they knew you'd do that. The. Uh, I know. The, that was uh, part of the plan. Dick story. So Wait, right, so which is fine, and I haven't read the Philip K. Dick, but I don't think he was. I, I don't think the he end was. Of his life, he got really uh, like the last three close. books he wrote. Uh, the last three books he wrote. Fuck this. <laughs> the last three there you books go. He wrote uh, were all like the Divine Comedy and exploring yeah, really? and all that. Yeah, he was fucking way into like all the Christian mythology and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, he was a, he was a talented writer, and, and, and I think science fiction is a good song. place to to well, explore those he, ideas. Uh, yeah, and he was kind of, I mean, I can't remember a lot about him, but he was uh, really paranoid, and like he had a meeting, he saw this woman once, and her necklace sent this pink light into his brain, and it was a message from blah 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 blah. So he was really kind and of, and he big. did a lot of drugs too. Yeah, he did. Speaking of a lot of drugs, you know that they're doing a sequel to Atlas Shrug. Um, you know, it's funny. I had heard that that was would happen because the movie was set up for a sequel. But you know, the guys working on it. The 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 budget for the movie was like almost twenty million dollars. That one of the producers paid out of pocket. No, and the movie only made two million. Wow, I uh, I keep hearing about this book. Like I was, I'm on some email list with some. People crazy people and, yeah <laughs> and uh like one guy one of the guys is in uh it's either i guess he's in afghanistan and he was reading it and uh they were talking about it and i want to say it's an older book right it's been around for a atlas while atlas shrug yeah. yeah yeah and i'm not sure what she wrote i think it was, she wrote it in the 50s yeah because it, it keeps getting mentioned in mad men uh a couple times and so like everywhere i didn't even know there was a movie made about it but this book keeps freaking popping up wherever i go well it was probably a- part of the plan but Probably, yeah. Yeah. No, they, um, they played at the local theater here for the longest time. And that's right. I remember someone here mentioning it. But Alice Shrugged was published in 1957. That's right. And I, and I did remember hearing that it, it tanked really bad. But they're, they're apparently working on the sequel to it. Because it's a cult. Oh, no, totally. Yeah, it's, it's like a <laughs> well, whole let's, certain let's, group of people that... Yeah. 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 And 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 Ayn Rand's movement of object Ayn Rand, if you're going to be pretentious and a lit bitch about it, <laughs> um, her her, you know, she was like a, a like almost, you know, in that spectrum of what qualifies as a cult or not. All of those guys that were with her in the day, it was kind of a cult. I mean, you know, she was a leader. She had the secret knowledge. She couldn't question her. It was it was almost like a cult, and it still kind of persists today. And people. It's kind People. of like your workplace, isn't it? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, so the, so the movie is all about, like, her philosophy of objectivism, and it's kind of like... Right, the haves and the have-nots. Yeah, but did you see the kerfuffle that was over the... Um, so in the movie, the, the 
the it, the movie is called Atlas Shrugged Part One because they didn't cover the whole book. It's not like they're making a sequel. They're just, well, just telling the rest of the yeah. story. And um, we gotta it's like it, right. It's, my, it's like Hamlet too. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we got to make more money. Um, so there was a big stink over the um when the DVD came out. Yeah. Did you see that about? No, I heard about this on that. There was email a blurb list, yeah. about um. On the back of the DVD, there's a blurb that some copy editor just, you know, wrote in his sleep. Obviously didn't get it. And it said, like, you know, Anne Rand, Atlas Shrugged, Part 1, a timeless tale of courage and self-sacrifice. Yeah. And, and like, you know, according to Anne Rand's philosophy of objectivism, self-sacrifice is the worst thing you can do. Like, if, you're, if you self-sacrifice, then you're an idiot in her, in her view. Yeah. That's noble. Yeah. Well, you know, like, and, and, and you know, sort of her her philosophy of objectivism is is really like, you know, look out for a number one, and don't do anything to help anybody out, and, and it's you know, it's it's not looking out for the other. So guy. this is total thug, then. I mean, this is like <laughs> this is like gangster rap, pretty much. Yeah. They just have a beat though. You can't yeah. dance to it. And I'm yeah. sure you know, like you, you know, if you tag this now with, I know how I'm gonna with make something about objectivism. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Atlas Shrug right here, son. Norfolk, <laughs> Virginia. Come yeah, you we're going to get real now. hate mail. <laughs> yeah, here it comes. But this, this reminds I don't know nothing about objectivism. But come after sp- me. Speaking of these crazy cults, we're going to talk about um, next, this non religious life of how ex members of the Scientology Church are suing the Church of Scientology to get Good. their money back. Good. Um, I held see, on to see. these two wires for. <laughs> yeah. Let's see him do it, man. I, I want him. To, I, 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 good. It's, ha, have you well, seen the video of the uh, the like Scientology song? No. From, from like the eighties or nineties, you gotta look it up. It's on YouTube. It is awesome. They like they recorded this giant like "We Are the World" kind of thing about Scientology, and it's like the worst thing I've ever seen. Awesome. It's awesome. Go check it out. Yeah. That's a yeah. There's a. And there was another story I heard about about uh, some woman who claimed she was held on a cruise ship on a Scientology cruise ship for like years, <laughs> wasn't allowed to leave. Wow. Yeah. Now these people here donated like I forget X amount of dollars. It was multiple hundreds, mm-hmm. um, in hopes to get future. Praise and pray, you know, guide get spiritual guidance, and they've no, they're no longer members of Scientology, and they want their money back for that. They didn't, they didn't pay for it, and in uh, Florida, you can't get back your gifts, but in the law of Scientology, you're able to get back your your donations if you request it, but you have to have three other. Uh, Scientologist to approve of good character, but since you, but if you leave the Church of Scientology, you are considered a heretic, so you're not going to get a good review. So they're suing the church and try to get their money because they're. We'll huh. talk about we'll talk about it on this non religious life. See how so that goes. It's 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 yeah, an it interesting story. Like a bunch of poor life choices. <laughs> so but we'll, we'll talk about that on this non religious life. Let's go back to <laughs> movies. Um, you saw that the first three minutes of. Um, the Walking Dead have hit the web. Um, the first three minutes of the new series, the the the, the video clip that we're playing here in the background, um, is titled Nebraska. It's it's the eighth episode of the second season, and it marks the first new one since November. And it, it's going to air sad. It's going to um Sunday, February twelfth. But that's that's an ad for the river. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, I don't recognize. It. Did they introduce all these new characters they, they totally in one did. show? I haven't I haven't been keeping up with um, the Walking Dead this season. I watched the first couple episodes and I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, the show's been really good, and I've kind of been waiting. Um, the last show was amazing. Yeah, I I've, I've kind of been spoiled as far as like watching TV shows. Um, because they come out on video and then I watch them all at once. I yeah, like yeah, I, yeah, and, yeah. and and I and I I like to do that. I like to um you know, watch like 5 or 6 at a time yeah. like late at night and um that's what I've been doing with Mad Men. Yeah. Uh, plus I 
never watched it when it first came on. So it's that's a cool show. What's that? Mad Men. Oh yeah. It was enough to make me start parting it. my hair. So, <laughs> was, uh, I can tell you've got it all tonic up. Yeah. Looks good, dude. I even went out and bought fucking brill cream. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Of course, now then it looks too slimy. Paul <laughs> hates the but, microphone tonight. Huh? I I'm losing you. Are you? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I guess you'll fix it in the mix. No, I won't. Oh well. There's, nobody's missing anything. No, no dude. Look, if he's not yelling at you, it's gonna be me. Next time I'll get like a prison mirror and I'll just hold it here to talk to Bob. <laughs> That'd be awesome. and we'll use our hands well, I, I offered yeah. to move it over there so you could sit. But like then that. it wants to be in the shot. And it's just oh, it would well. we'll anyway. I mean, it's in the shot. <laughs> so what's the difference? It would be even more in the shot. All right, all right. This is what we're gonna do. Everybody's gonna go and buy their own lapel mic. That'd be nice. We could do. Actually, I'm gonna show up do? with my own. I'm going to buy like some kids' headgear. <laughs> for dentistry right that'd be awesome yeah, you should so totally do that so when you turn, turn like this. <laughs> please do that uh, it'll be this whole thing that'd be awesome please do that or i've got like the russian gas mask and i can take the thing off and just put the mic on <laughs> and, sit around and, and then breathe yeah. through the darth vader yeah. so when we get the <laughs> kids are making yeah. bongs out of them but i'm gonna make you're gonna, you're make, no. that'd be awesome because when we get the green screen we can totally put you like in. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Why is there always an atom bomb going on? <laughs> You're like floating what in space. What does that say about you? Like, <laughs> yeah. Some kids are making bongs, not me. <laughs> yeah. I got a better use for this. That was scary. Well, I'm no longer a kid, so... I mean, there's that, but... Really? Yeah. <laughs> Insidious made $1.5 million. You skipped Evil Dead. I know it didn't. I'm just looking on your cheat. Yeah, they made that's... 1.5 million. 1.5 million. Oh no, that was their their yeah. budget. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was. You know, it's uh, the same guys that did it. Of course, they did. Some of them did Saw, and some was Paranormal yeah. Activity. But they did uh, Dead Silence, which they were given a huge budget for. But the studio kept coming in and did you know do this, change this, change this, and they had their hand in it. And by the time it came out and finished, it kind of tanked. Yeah. And so they were given a much smaller budget. I want to say they said they were given like thirty million for Dead Silence, and it didn't make any of it back. Which I love that movie. Yeah, Dead I have, I never saw. That. I don't know. Was Insidious it was. I mean, you liked it, obviously. I love that <laughs> movie. It's just like everything, like horror about it. Like, I mean, it's about an old woman and her ventrilo. She was a ventriloquist, and there's like creepy dolls. And they have the little song about her. I mean, it's got like it, it. It hits every spot that you know, of a typical horror movie should have. Yeah, it's just fun. I like it a lot. Starring Donnie Wahlberg. Yes, he's actually <laughs> quite good in it. I love that the lesser Wahlberg is in it. Yeah. The only thing that would have been better is to have like a Wayne's in it, but you know, or a Baldwin. A Baldwin, a Wayne's, <laughs> and a Baldwin. Hey, we've seen him. The lesser Slither. Baldwin. Oh my God. But he's all into Jesus now, but that's a different story. But no, um, it's part of the plan. The, apparently, they had so much fun doing um, the the first Fucking love Insidious, that and they they made a lot of money off of the first film because it was good. It was good. Um, they're doing. I, I they're, loved Insidious. Yeah, it, I thought that was so cool. It was. We, uh, we saw it in the. Uh, yeah, we gave away events. We got the events. And there was giveaways. Like nobody in there. Oh, they and, messed up. Because that was good. It, yeah. you were, I mean, you know, we're not like completely jaded, but it's, you know, we watch enough movies to where we rarely jump or get creeped out. And uh, it's a PG-13 movie. Yeah. It, it did good. <laughs> it, it did really was, good. It yeah. was creepy as hell. Well, I'm, that's why I'm happy that they're doing part two. Yeah. And it's going to be, um, apparently it's going to be you know, the, the same directors, writers and stuff nice. um, for this. Um, in fact, the, the director said that Insidious was uh, the most fun project that he's ever worked on. From the start to finish, it was an absolute joy. The writing, from the writing of the screenplay all the way to the first screening at the, of the film at the Toronto Film Festival. You know who he I'd said like he had to a blast. More of in that? I mean, I don't know what it's going to be yeah. about or if it's going to follow the same people. First of all, the photos with that lady were awesome. 
the old lady that had been following the dude yeah. his whole life. Oh, yes. yes. That was great. I, I went and put that on my screensaver <laughs> the next day and turned off all the lights in my office and just I had a couple of people be like, dude, you got to take that down. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think that um, the e- I, I think that Insidious, one of the things that was great about Insidious is it does some world building. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. and and so now, now in cities, you have this world where there's this other side, the further, and I love that name. Yeah, I know, kind of cool, right? right? Yeah, and um, uh, and so you could have, you know, you could tell another story about people in in the further yeah. Yeah. without like having to bring back um the same you know, character, the family from yeah. the first film. But you know who I'd like to see more of the two uh, assistants. Oh, oh the, the sign. Yeah, yeah. I really <laughs> like them, and there were a couple like funny parts, but they weren't like too funny. And, you liked right. it because about that time we were really into demonology and stuff, and we're like, yeah. we could totally <laughs> re- make this stuff. And then we saw that, and we're like, oh my god, that's what. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were we were like, all I need debating. is a viewmaster. Yeah, yeah well, we were debating like, should we just start our own paranormal thing just for shits and giggles, <laughs> just to see who we were, buys. Ta- we were talking about taking demonology courses and yeah. <laughs> But then we realized it's all it's all shams, and we can give our I own don't titles. Think we didn't realize. It. No, no, uh, yeah, true. <laughs> Correct. But we were so inspired. Did by you Tommy guys have like a, 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 a sudden true. like attack of integrity? No, well, I don't no. have no. integrity. So. <laughs> it was just like life happened, and we moved on. To yeah. things. I mean, yeah, I don't know. A lot of people that are into that, you know, especially the, the demonology part, they. You know, they obviously believe in it, and Vincent Price is a demonologist. Yeah, I'd I'd love to discover God through demons. I'd like to go the other way. Yeah, instead <laughs> of you know, discovering demons through the church and, and going into. I want to start from the bottom and Just, come back up. I, I want to experience it all before. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be so thrilled if it was all true. Yeah. All the demon possessions. See, that's that's the thing. Holy <laughs> shit, we're gonna burn! But look at what we got to see. <laughs> Look at all the freedoms and powers we got now. <laughs> <laughs> live it up. <laughs> you only live once and then you Thank burn. You, Anton <laughs> <laughs> no, but going back to Insidious, we're, now we're in a fantasy world. Yeah, right? it's a, happens a lot. Life could be so much better if we worship Satan. Um, no, but I'm excited about it because if, it, if, if they keep to the same theme and keep to the, the where they, you know, put so much love and energy because you know they had fun making that film. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's going to be a huge success. Demons and Tiny Tim, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I love the red faced demon in yeah. Insidious. God, it was such a cool character design. I I read uh, shit. I forgot who and he was. And scary. Yeah, he was like a sound guy, or he wrote the music. He did something. I've got it in a magazine. Uh, an interview with him. It's real small. I'll see if I can find it and email it to you. So what's your point? I was trying to remember who the guy was. He was involved in the film in oh, some okay. other oh. way. He was like I a sound you were trying to say something. You remember that part like that? where they had that loud sound? That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. You remember when the lights flashed? Yeah. Although yeah, I, did, I did love great. the beginning and the end. That kind of the the Sam font Raimi style, like the, the font, <laughs> just like <laughs> <laughs> with all the violins. When when Insidious hit the screen. You're just like, what fun is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. It's funny when we left, I heard a couple people like, that part was so stupid. I, I was <laughs> He's like, that, that part awesome. made me go, this film is real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was. It was really good. Yeah, it was fun. I, 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 ha- I would hate to like go to a theater like in watching Insidious, and I, I wish I had a seen it in a the theater. But you know that there's going to be that guy there that's like trying to be. I don't. I don't know who he's trying to impress. We're. we're I didn't and jump. I, I saw everybody. That jump, was stupid. I, I didn't like. Yeah. Didn't, I didn't. Well, I wasn't scared at all. I don't know what you thought was. <laughs> that was stupid. I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. That was awesome. Yeah. Well, there's. <laughs> well, we were lucky. Like, we saw it like ten when people. You go to like the free ones. <laughs> yeah. Because for some reason, brings people, out the jackasses. Yeah. Well, because it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's just not free. Just nobody people can... who want to see that style of movie. If you're paying for it, you're usually into it, or you're like, right. whatever. I got nothing better. I got a date, and this is but. But when it's free, fucking people who don't even like that stuff come out to see a free movie. Yeah. Um, I mean, when, if I wanted to what, be a jerk about wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to say for the record, I'm very grateful these studios give us free tickets yes, to get yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm if saying, it wasn't for that, we wouldn't I'm have saying, seen in City. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm saying that 
when it's when Good it's a point. free preview and you get these wonderful passes that we're so lucky to get. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> Some of the other people aren't as grateful, right? <laughs> as we exactly, are. and they're they're just they're not really into the time, spirit you know? of it. Yeah, and so they're always like, "That sucks." And it sucks. I thought, you know, we went and saw uh, "Don't Be Afraid of the Dark." Yeah, and uh, it was the same thing. We got wonderful passes that we're thankful for, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but so many people were like. No, such crap. I hate that. So this. You know, and they, yeah. they don't like that kind of movie. They just went to it because yeah. it was free. Yeah, and I mean, you know, go ahead. You know, I mean, it's it's free. And yeah. I think that was part of the brilliance of the um, the first Paranormal Activities marketing campaign because what they did is they, they platformed it. They, they only showed it in a couple of cities. They were always midnight shows. You know, so so it was a little bit of an effort to get out. Somebody had to make a special trip. Right. The only people that would do that is somebody that wanted to go to that kind of movie, yeah. and then they well, built it and built it with word of mouth, and and um and they got the people that wanted to play along. I mean, come on, if you you could go to any movie and and sit down and be like, you know, la di da, I am in a theater eating popcorn, and this is just you know moving pictures on a screen. I know nothing's gonna, I, you know, you want I want to go to a movie and I want to play along. That's that's why I love three D. Unless I, it's some kind of secular, right? Unless uh, it's some kind of like the adjustment bureau, <laughs> in which case, and then you like, want to play it. along at all, and you're really nope. worried about the effect it's going to have on the society but, that's dumber than you. <laughs> <laughs> but you put it like that. Yeah, just, I mean, those are cliff notes. <laughs> That's why I like you 3- hurt me. Oh, but that's I'm why I like that's why I like, a, I like 3D movies, <laughs> is because it, it it brings that extra element and actually sucks you in if done properly. Oh fuck! Yeah. I just got into 3D. It wasn't even about 3D. Motherfucker! No. But <laughs> this is what happens when I get too much caffeine. <laughs> my my asshole level jumps. Like, yeah, screw but, you. I'm not depressed right now. And fuck you. That's fine. <laughs> but the asshole level for the show is good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> It's actually exceeding its level. You need to dial it. Yeah, dial it. No. <laughs> You're at an 11. I need you at an 8. <laughs> yeah. I can what can we do to get to an 8? <laughs> <laughs> because Monday, guess where I'm going to be? Where are you going to be? Watching Star Wars The Phantom Menace in 3D. Oh, that's right, because you've never seen it. I've never seen it. I was telling somebody, we were talking about it the other day at work, and the guy comes up to me and goes, how did you know it was going to be in 3D when the first one came out? And I was like, because I'm into 3D. He goes, but 3D wasn't even popular then. How did you know? <laughs> Somebody asked me if I was going to go see it, and I sent him this long text back. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this text actually cost me money to send. Yeah, it was really <laughs> So you're going to go with us? Fuck no. You should have just sent them to listen to episode, I don't know, whatever number yeah. it was. My, <laughs> my, re- my requirements for going to, to see any of the Star Wars movies in 3D has, has grown like not only do I now need to get in for free and be paid five dollars, I need George Bush to stand up. I mean, George, George Bush, <laughs> George Lucas to. I've been drinking. George Lucas needs to stand up and publicly apologize yeah, right. for Jar Jar Binks, and he needs to publicly apologize for um, Crystal Skull, and I, I think I even said something about a blowjob or something like that. Not necessarily. Wait, 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 wait. The the. F- the the slip was George Bush, so you really want a blowjob from George Bush? Yeah, no. Picturing this meme of gray hair. He's picturing. Like, so sorry. That would have been funny if if everybody could hear it. Yeah, I'm not going because I don't think any of that's going to happen. <laughs> I told totally you I'm with you. I totally go. I, totally go. I mean, go by myself. You guys what? You guys what is go. she saying? It looks like we're going. Are we yeah. going? Yeah. All right. That's All fine right. with me. <laughs> I'll see you Monday. All right. We'll have the matinee. Matinee on Monday. Yeah. I have a job. So <laughs> this is Star Wars yeah, 3D. Play, uh, get the Wookie Hooky, the Phantom Flu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't care that much. <laughs> Damn. Plans foiled again, but it's only playing for the weekend. It's not playing. In, oh, once really? the weekend's over, it's gone. Oh wow! So it's gonna be like all the really sad people there. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. That's gonna oh, be and the other thing was too, they had to change the ending so that Darth Maul doesn't go out like a chump. What? 
I think he sorry. Should, <laughs> I think he should should get rid of the actor who played uh, Vader Young, uh, Anakin. Get back a, as a whiny bitch that he is during that. Is a Hayden Christensen? Oh no, the little yeah. kid is. Um, no, the little kid is fine. Oh, you're talking about Hayden Christensen? Yeah. Man. Oh my god, that dude sucks. Yeah, he he. Well, the little but kid. That, what's his name? Hayden picture. Christians. Hayden Christensen. Oh. And they should make Natalie Portman mute. <laughs> that would help. Yeah, because she's generally a good actress, but not with dialogue that poorly written. I mean, that was bad. I can't Have wait. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Enjoy all the racial stereotypes in that first one. All right. Well, you know what. Um, I can get my Star Wars 3D glasses specially made for it. They're the the speeder, the race pod glasses that are in No 3D. amount of special right. 3D glasses is going to save it. And I don't care. I've waited. And there's a reason I waited. Because haters like me are not going to well, no. get in your way. No, because if I saw it when it first came out, one, I didn't give him, George Lucas, my money twice. I'm giving it to him once. And I don't have to watch the worst of the films twice. I see it once. I'm just trying to do you a favor, man. You don't have to give him your money at all. Oh, you're not going to see the worst of the films first. I mean, the first one is probably the best of the... Everybody else disagrees. Everybody says that the last one's the best. The first one sucks because of Jar Jar. The third one, they don't even... Or the middle one, they don't even remember. The first one's got Jar Jar, but... Damn, that race scene is really good. Yeah, and it's going to sure. be in 3D. Sure. Yeah, the pod the race really scene cool. is kind of cool. You should just walk in for that scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm here for the format. five minutes of pod racing. And then, <laughs> then you're out of here. And I'm out. I open the exit door like we did when we were kids. You know, at the yeah. end, and you can come in. That would be piracy. That would not be piracy. That would be piracy. That would not be piracy. Not in that By case, definition. I feel like no, George no, no, Lucas no, 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 owes no, no, me. Okay, <laughs> that's not piracy. Again, the, the terminology for piracy has been sadly... Thrown. That's still stealing something that you're supposed to pay That's not, for. Stealing is not piracy. All right. Well, it's theft. <laughs> okay. But you know what? You know what the thing is, though. Like right now, like, I, and I, I don't want to like. Um, I don't know. I'm We're trying to like reestablish piracy. my fanboy cred. Um, you can't. It's I uh, <laughs> I think I'm more in love with the Star Wars universe now more than ever. I really am. I fucking love it, man. I just, Are you like, playing the online? Um, no, I haven't been playing Knights of the Old Republic, uh, but but I mean, but I played the first Knights of the Old Republic games, like um, you know, I think the new online game is just called The Old Republic. Yeah, and um, I've heard cool things about it. I played the but, Old Republic. Um, I don't know, like, I, like right now, I want a lightsaber more than I ever did as a kid. Like, see, a, I never like a real it. one or oh, just yeah. a toy one. I want, I want, I want a, as close a replica lightsaber as I get. Now, I, yeah, I'd love a real one that like cuts through steel. That's a that's a, a wish, but I, I'd settle for like a cool replica one I can put on my wall. And um, Sideshow Collectible has a really awesome. Oh one. yeah, I know they got good stuff. I never understood the fascination with Star Wars. I mean, I like them; they're good, but that's it. You know, uh, yeah, it's I, and you know, that, and, 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 I've, that, and I've never known why certain people are so into it, and others aren't. Yeah. Although I will say this, the few atheist friends that I've had that are like, I'm an atheist, motherfucker, have always been hardcore into Star Wars. You know why? And comic you? books. You know why? I, yeah. I, well, I have a theory is that I think humans need an outlet for fantasy, and it's not being met with religion. So they turn to other things. I, that I have, I have that no is an interesting that, point. But that, that is, is totally my theory, and I'm sticking with it. Now, uh, that's pretty uh, good. You may be absolutely right. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, humans are wired to need certain things, and I think that's a need, you know, imagination, fantasy. If that was true, nobody would ever get married. Do I? <laughs> Um, yeah, you, I, you, you know, you might even actually like, you might hit the nail right on the head. You might actually be onto something. I mean, you, you could be dead on. I, I don't know. I mean, now, this isn't to offend the like, uh, you know, East Coast Christian chapter of Star Wars. <laughs> right, <fans> right. Out <laughs> there. I totally respect you, but yeah, I've just I've never been into it, but yeah. I have noticed the the it's, correlation between the two. I, I you know what I've noticed? So why, why are you more into it now? I don't know. I, I think that um, 
I, I think like all of the world building that's done in Star Wars is 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 great. I think that there's like so much untapped potential there to tell stories, and um, I, I don't know. I, I was I was kind of wondering about that too. Like you would think that like all of this like bile and vitriol that I have for George Lucas and what he's done would would like turn me off. But man, there was a guy that came into the videos. I, like I don't have but, tattoos but the, the, at all. The right? universe is more than just his movies. I mean. It is, but he kind of is the architect of it all. Right. And, and, and at the same time, he's the worst enemy of it all. But there was a guy that came into the video store today, and he had a he had a Rebel Alliance, you know, tattooed uh-huh. on his arm. And I was, and I, like, I don't even like tattoos, and I was like, dude, that's awesome. That's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend that I was best friends with in high school. And back then, I mean, he was really into comic books, but I had no inkling. You know, I don't think he was into Star Wars at all. And now, if I go on Facebook, he's got the fucking Bubba Fett, you know, mask on, yeah. the helmet, and I was just like, "What?" And all his posts are like references to this, and he's like really into it. I'm like, "When did that happen?" Yeah, I, I, I thought know, we man. were this kind of dork, but yeah. no, we were this kind of, you know. So, yeah, my my love for Star Wars has only grown and not diminished, in spite of the movies being fuckered up. My favorite part about Star Wars when Captain Picard went <laughs> pissing people off. <laughs> Star Wars, that's the one with Captain Picard. Yeah, but you're not going to get shot by anything that's going to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. Something will make you feel bad. <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see this. One of the reasons I'm really excited about seeing it is because. Um, I want to see how well they did the 2D, 3D conversion. Probably not well at all. Well, I don't know because I, I really want to have put little faith in, in, you know, LucasArts that they would take the time and the effort to do the conversion well enough to, mm. you know. I just wish that was so. Really? You don't, you, you think I they're going to do a crappy 2D, 3D conversion? Yep. You, you, just, you just have some kind of. Pin up a girl. I'm just a hater, it. man. Yeah, you are. Mm. Oh my god! Oh, like you know, the thing that I love about watching even just the trailer for Phantom Menace, I just, it just. Um, well, this is actually in 3D. You can watch it with the. Remember, glasses. remember, we were talking about like, like, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe this is like to what you were saying. Um. Remember, we were talking about the belief in belief, you know. Like, when Phantom Menace came out, I wanted it to be awesome so badly. I just wanted it to be so good. And, now, and, and you know, like, watching a trailer for it, I still feel that way. Even though I well, know it sucks. Well, because they cut out all the parts that you don't like. And I'm they know, like, they know oh, the parts to, to cut out. Because there are many a letter and message board that, you know, have yeah. been filled up with that information. But it's just, like I said, it's, it's the belief in belief, you know? Like, I... I it, it, there's something there was something good about wanting it to be good yeah well next show I will give you a full report of what I, I cannot of. wait <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait because you're gonna I'm you're, upset that it, they didn't talk about all the what the fuck moments yeah and, I'm upset they're not releasing it in IMAX because I would go see this at IMAX well don't you think that if they really had all of the fans interest in heart for the true 3d experience that they'd have done it in IMAX. no because disney and, owns, and doesn't that tell you something no because disney owns real 3d the the 3d technology that is used in like right. amc and stuff and i think they're in bed so far with disney on certain things yeah. uh, right. it's marketing so yeah. is that what uh, it's going to be in real 3d yeah the engineer nerd in me loves that Loves the real 3D. Yeah. Why? Oh, look at George Lucas just going. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's circular. I mean, it has nothing to do with him. Just a hand job. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, real 3D is circularly polarized light. Yep. So, I just think that's awesome. I'm just nodding in agreement. Just like he is. I know polarized. So, but I don't know so you know polarized, right? So, light is a wave, right? Right. So. I thought it was and, a and, we, and when, when I was you know, when I was in school we did math to like this is how you you did math to, to 
think about like how wave particles like bounce off of stuff and interact with things and um and so when you, you like imagine okay here's a light Oop, it's a particle swing you know going through air so, so that math is pretty easy and then now it's a wave and so you go woo, 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 it like moves up and down right like, like a wave sound. right now well this sounds good now it's a wave <laughs> now it's a wave and it's going in a circle as it moves up and down as it moves oh, wow. through space and not only that but there's the um the um the properties of electromagnetism are such that if one wave is going this way no matter where it's at there's another wave that is equally um like at 90 degrees to it that supports it and props it up and they the two keep each other going that's how electromagnetism works so so while this wave is moving up and down, spinning in a circle as it travels through space, there's another wave that's 90 degrees to it, moving up and down and traveling in a circle as it moves along together. It's like really awesome so math. The wave, the wave. And, and it's so complex that we have to come up with things called imaginary numbers to, oh, wow. to conceptualize it. So the wave that's at the side... Hey. It didn't start from way back here. So where did it start it, from? It, it gets did, carried did, did, along did with it. Did it start like with this and then turn in? Or no. Or it shoot from the side to begin with? That wave is pointing in the other direction, moving up and down, and spinning around in circles. Oh. But it's trapped within the same radius as the yeah. other wave. One is... One is um, so is one like master and the other slave? Or are they just working No, the, the two are together. That's why, it's, that's, why, that's why when they talk about it, it's electromagnetism not just magnetism or electricity it's both because you, you can't <laughs> have one without the other and 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 one one wave propagates the other and one wave supports the other but there's no distinction between who does what you, you always get both it's like the u behind the q yeah. <laughs> and so what that does is when when you when you're viewing when you're viewing the screen it just gives you two images at different in, intervals. Well, no, the cool thing about circularly polarized images is that the screen is in 3D no matter what viewing angle yeah. you have so you can turn your head and move no. up well, that's, and down that's the, and that's that that's why it's of superior technology to the old 3D which was just linearly polarized Well the, the linear I mean you can you can I, I have some old linear 3D if you did this during a movie you yeah. wouldn't be able to see it in 3D with the real 3 with real D you can do that um, it still gives you distortion. It's it's not perfect. They it, still it need to work nothing, on it. Nothing's going to be perfect, but it's still pretty cool. And I'm like just thinking about the math in my head. It's really good. Mm. It's fun. Is but, it the wave that gives you distortion, or is it something from our eyes and the shape? It's 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 it's, 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 the, it's the way that we're viewing. Okay, because the the way they depending on how they do it, if, if it's over under or side by side. Um, you're getting two images, even right. even if it's done real D shutter lens or whatever. There's there's dual okay. images. So like say like f say for example, if you're getting side by side, and you tilt this way, you're no longer getting the same yeah. images. You're getting the images. No, like, I'm saying I was just asking. I wonder what causes that. Is it because our eyes only focus a certain way? No, it's because it's the way that it's, it's the way the image is reaching our eyes. Because it's, 3D is an optical illusion. It's not real. I, well, yeah, I know well, that. I, but I'm also explaining it to the listeners, and just in case they do. Um, so, so like if it's linear, and and we turn our if we're seeing it this way, or even if we're seeing it this you know horizontal, um, this image is identical to this image, slightly to right. the left or right. Um, if we tilt our head, uh, the way the way it meets our eyes, if our head's straight forward, is perfect to cause that illusion. On li on linear, if you tilt your head, it, it it changes off the way these two images hit. It it it, it distorts it and makes it where you can't see. I it. bet it's I bet it's because, however slight and imperceptible it is, as soon as you tilt your head, one image has to go just a little bit further yeah. than the That's other. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah, like I wonder why. And and since you're not since you're sitting still, there's no Doppler shift to take up for it. So so, um. Yeah, even though I bet it has something to do with, you know, even if you just tilt your head just a slightly bit, now you've increased the distance that the light has to travel ever so slightly, and it's enough to matter. Yeah, and and that's what that's the downfall of the linear. I bet that's that the downfall for uh, anaglyph too, the the red and blue. Um, if you tilt your head yeah. on that, it, uh, because a shutter lens you can you can't tilt either because with the shut the way the shutter lens works is it. Because real, we don't see out of each eye at the same time. 
it, our eyes flicker. Uh, it's such a a fast and the way shutter lens does is it reverses that flicker and that's what causes the um so like you're getting the right image in the left eye um and then you get the right and it just flickers so fast and if you're watching with active lens and you tilt it it throws that sync off as well it's it's crazy but anyway i've never been to an active shutter movie really yeah all imax when they first came out used to always be active shutter yeah um they're not anymore. Um, the best TVs, if you're going to buy a 3D TV, the best quality um, will be always Active Shutter. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I guess. Wait, yeah, no, you watch Active Shutter. If you watch that stuff that I give no, you. I mean, at a theater. Oh, yeah. I've, I've never been at a theater because your Active Shutter, um, your glasses were actually pretty comfortable, and, but I didn't have them on for long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those were like short little films, but. No, they were full featured films. You no, watch I only them. watched like 30 minutes. <laughs> guess the glasses weren't that comfortable. And then I was like, I saw this. It was Questor at Bush Gardens. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that ride. That is duct tape looking seats with the truck. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Like, I I um, I don't mind the 3D glasses on the real 3D. And I've heard that the active shutter glasses are heavy. Dude, I can't. Well, well it depends. Them. It depends on who makes them. I mean, because I got a photo. I'll show you after this. That back of the original. Um, shutter lens for IMAX seriously was this head gear that you put around that had yeah. built in speakers. See, push, I wouldn't do that. It was awesome. I loved it. The fucking lens, the, the fucking lens was this big for each eye. It was Jeez. awesome. I, loved I cannot it. stand. I mean, I'll go and wear it, but it, it really sucks when you already wear glasses and yeah. then you have to cram these glasses on top of your glasses, yeah. but they have special ones you can request for that actually, um, clip onto the the bridge you know you know how you see those people that have the yeah. sunglasses lens they have yeah. those they? At, uh, well they they should most of them should have them um not like an amc i'm saying like at imax and stuff oh. um but there's such a big push now that um all the sunglass makers all the designers are coming out with specialized 3d glasses so you can carry your own 3d glasses you know, I really assumed if it, that, yeah that would happen eventually well have you seen the the avengers they've come out with specialized 3d glasses for the avengers um and it's it's they it's for all the characters the was gonna be, be in 3D. yeah 3d became that prevalent that you would you know go to uh the optometrist and get your uh regular glasses your sunglasses and your 3d prescription glasses. <laughs> all a conspiracy from the from the glasses makers union yeah that's exactly. that's cool i'm all down for it See, look, here's all the Avengers. This is coming oh, you out. Can get, okay. And, and it's real D3. So you could wear these at any um, movie. So there's but Iron Man's, there's... Thor, Captain America, and Hulk. Uh, the, uh, of course, the Green Ones are Hulk, yeah. Um, which I think is cool. They're doing the same that thing. kind of cool. They're doing the same thing for um, Star Wars, too. Uh, but they're only doing can Star you Wars. you get the Jar Jar Binks glasses? No, you can, oh, you're God. getting the... Um, I don't know where it's at. I'm looking at Market Saw website. Okay. There was a there was a R2 picture of Darth Maul up there on the left. Yeah, that's just an ad, though. Why is oh, okay. everyone so into him? He was awesome. See, I don't get it. He never seemed awesome. It's like Boba Fett. I never he was why people uh, again. Like him. Uh, that's there you go. That you added something else to the list. George mm. George Lucas has to apologize for Boba Fett going out like a chump. <laughs> oh yeah. Boba Fett was a hero. I don't know why people. That, but I don't okay, know. so now we're up to see. Look, here's here's the um, the three D glasses for the Phantom Menace. You get the Pod Racer awful. glasses. Well, they, they're for kids. I mean, okay. these are not for. See, right. I totally disagree. I was like, those are fucking. You would like yeah. them because they're they're, they're, they're kind of steampunk yeah. looking. But <laughs> I don't know. They're kind of goofy looking. They're fun. Yeah. Um, they look like child aviator glasses. I mean, they kind of do. I mean, it's like you can see the picture of the kid. Cause that selected um, theater. Hey, All right, little kids will dig it. I can. Look, get yeah, they that. would. I mean, that's what the original Star Look Wars at that seems. Kid. He's totally like that. Uh, wow, that kid is thinking uh, when he's looking at that 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 accent is completely offensive to me. <laughs> 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 or he's thinking, oh my god, Christian Anderson, or is it Anderson? Uh, fuck, what's his name? Anderson Cooper. No, I'm just he's kidding. like that dude is a total bitch. <laughs> I, I can't believe Christian he's going thing. to be. Yes. What was the name of the kid that was, that was the, Anderson, the young, the young Anakin? Anakin, the really yeah. young the little kid. What was his name? Wasn't he the same kid that was in the Sixth Sense? 
No, no, that's. <laughs> uh, but it came out at the same time, right? Did they? Yeah, they did. Oh. That's how old this film is. I guess it is old. Damn. But it came out in '96. I don't know. Feminist. I don't know. But no, I I like the fact that they're coming out because even when Transformers 3D came out, the toy section had the Trans Optimus Prime helmet that had the built-in 3D glasses that That's you could wear. Cool. And I was gonna get that, but they were too small for my head. Because I would <laughs> wear it. Gotten one I would have yeah. totally done it. Shave You're your gonna be rocking the Optimus Prime. <laughs> <up. laughs> Miley wouldn't so sit with me, but I would be wearing. It. <laughs> but I, I I like that. <laughs> I would have loved to go to the theater. <laughs> And seeing a grown man sitting there <laughs> like that, and, and his w- wife or girlfriend just like yeah, <laughs> she uh, she would have to wear one too. Yeah. <laughs> she get the bumblebee. She get the bumblebee. Yeah, one. Yeah. Phantom Menace was ninety nine. Was it ninety nine? Yeah. Well, yeah. I waited this long to see it. Yes. I stayed true to three D, man. I stay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you really know when that movie? Was I really going? did. I really did. Really? I prom. I sw- I don't know what I'd swear on, but guaranteed, I knew about it. Because you know, if you'd have talked to somebody in 1999, I talked to people back back when it came out, back before they even when they started shooting it. I said, "No, I'm waiting for it to be in 3D." They're like, "Why would it ever be in 3D? Because George Lucas is planning on doing this in 3D." No, I got in so many arguments. Oh, I people thought you called, were talking about you started saying this after the first one, like in 19. No, not in 77. No, no, no. So I was like, really? No, I just don't think your parents loved you enough to take you. No, I wouldn't. Have. No, yeah, what okay, I'm saying okay. is, there's you, if you'd have talked to because we were discussing this on the way over, I was like. He's full of shit if he's saying it. <laughs> no, not from the first, not yeah, okay. the, the, not the one that we grew up with. I'm talking about okay, yeah, when they started what... filming Phantom Menace. Right. I knew that they were going to release it in right, 3D. Right. That was, you know, what, 14 years ago, 13 years ago. Um, 3D wasn't yeah. an issue. But 3D wasn't even as prevalent then as it is now. What I'm, what I'm saying is if, if you would have talked to any Hollywood insider in 1999 and said, you know, hey, you need to get this movie out in 3D. They'd have been like, fuck you, no way. Yeah. Nobody's going to go see a 3D movie. 3D was, was a gimmick. I mean, it, it comes back like every 10 years. It, it hit in the 80s. It, it was big in the 50s. It was big in um, the late 70s, early 80s, to the mid 80s. And then it got its kick with kickoff again when Avatar came out. Yeah. And it's been it's rolling again. That was a good stretch, though. That was a little more than ten years. That that was yeah, but it's roughly it's it's yeah. well, historically obviously been. It's, it was all about the you know the technology. And, and, and that's and, you know, that's, and having said that, I don't want you to think like I hate on three D because I know I bust on your. I like. Oh man, whatever. I don't care. Um, yeah, people busted on my chops when I said I'm waiting for Phantom Menace to dude, come out in three D. Like carving it into your door. Right? Yeah. I know. I saw it. Three D sucks balls. <laughs> um, Hugo was really nice in three D. He he won an award for that film. Really? Oh, yeah. well, Golden Globe, he won Best Director. Did he? Was that what yeah. it was? Yeah. Um, but I, lo- I loved Hugo in 3D. It was really cool, because especially, I don't know, it just seemed like... You know they're going to release all, re-release all of the... Uh, what's the guy's name? George... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. George Millier, the, 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 the French director. They should release it all in 3D. Yeah. I've been waiting. <laughs> since. Oh, look at They're this jazz like production <laughs> 3D with George Melier. Um, Dirty hand tinted. Mm. You know that would that, actually that would be an interesting thing because George Melier he did all of those sets where it would be like a flat. Sorry, yeah, a, look, a flat yeah. something, and that would sort of lend itself to a post production look. That would be interesting to see. We um we have all the George Melier stuff at the um. At the video store, and it's mm-hmm. really neat. It's I've watched re- them all. He made yeah. he made hundreds of movies, but he, yeah. you know this he was like, him. you know this is like a hundred years ago. Yeah, well, they, these were like ten minute movies. Right, 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 right. Yeah, They're very, so. very short. But it was just like the whole idea of his like workshop, and I love it. Um, that was really cool. And the, and Hugo, I think, lent itself to a three D look, especially with the outside shots with all the snow and the train station, and then when they're in the the clock, the, the tower, clock yeah. towers and the you, know, you like the three D really helped you see a sense of like like depth of field and, and it just really that, that that was a that was an instance of 
of 3D really done well, and not just as a gimmick, but, you know, come on, it's Scorsese. I, 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 I would have expected yeah. no less. The majority of 3D is done pretty well now. Tron, Tron 3D was, was great. Right. At first, I was a little disappointed because I was expecting... Um, the eye popping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was expecting gimmick 3D, but that's the movie I was like, oh, wait a minute, you can artfully do this <laughs> and just... Because that that city, man, the shots... Yeah. I remember you walking out, going. We it talked, and you're so like, deep. you're like, oh my god, I'm it, doing redoing my house. It's, it's Why like, can't we yeah, live there? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Every time I put that soundtrack in, I'm yeah, like, I'm just gonna write minimalistic collection. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that movie. First of now, all, try I, had a cool I, I love Cold too. Blue. Yeah, so that's you know, it it is awesome. But yeah, um, the Hobbit shot yeah. 3D trailer looks amazing it looks like it plays well with 3d um peter jackson is saying he loves shooting in 3d well he also used that um, um that that phantom camera too he uses james cameron's yeah yeah and that's but why it, i haven't watched bad taste i've been waiting yeah um, right i've been waiting for it in 3d right <laughs> but but even, <laughs> but even but even with um the director of um hugo he's saying that he loved doing 3d and martin scorsese yeah and um, Scorsese, <laughs> the next Martin Scorsese, um, <laughs> the uh, I, I thought Scorsese was at home with the three D camera. He like, in in fact, he knew what he was trying to do, and he knew that three D was gonna be the way to get there. I love the production shots of that film. Because it shows him standing there with the glasses on doing this directing, but he has the 3D glasses and he has a monitor where the camera's shooting. Really? So, so he's watching it in 3D as he's directing, and it's yeah, uh, very cool. The photos are awesome. Have you seen the photo of um of uh Ian McKellen in the Gandalf makeup? Yeah, he's all dressed up as Gandalf, but he's wearing the 3D glasses, looking at the dailies. Yeah, and even even McKellen on his blog, he was like, "Man, 3D is going to kick ass on this this, this film." The, the trailer, because I when I watch movies, when I watch trailers and stuff that's released in 2D, that it's going to be in 3D, I can tell somewhat just because of experience. I can tell what is going to actually, if done properly, what is going to be a really kick ass shot. And there, so I, when I'm watching these trailers, especially that one. The Hobbit, I'm j- I'm drooling because it's it's just gonna be uh, awesome. I, I did see a picture of him wearing a red t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen this? No. It because says, I'm uh, I'm Magneto and Gandalf. Get, get over, over it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the fact that anyone would have a shirt that just says like I'm Magneto, and yeah. you're really the character. <laughs> it's so awesome. It is awesome. But yeah. um, that, that's like, how can you not like Ian McKellen, dude? He's fucking Magneto and Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> Get over it, <laughs> or deal with it is what he says. And maybe that's this, what it yeah. was. It was something, but it was pretty funny. Yes, it is awesome. Um, we're all Evil Dead fans, right? Yeah. Who yes. wouldn't Who? be an Evil Dead fan? I well, watched it the other day. There is casting of the remake, and Ash is going to be a girl this time. Right. She's going to be a redheaded girl, and this is her. Is that the girl from Suburgatory? It's the girl from yep. Suburgatory. It is. That, her name She's is... awesome. I know. I it, love that show. Have you watched it? I love it. Jane Levy show. is her name. She's really good in it. And her dad is really good, too. He was in... That's uh, Jeremy Sisto. Yeah, Six Feet Under as uh, Billy, the crazy guy. But yeah, so that's... She's going to be be the new Ash. Awesome. I love that She's thing. cool, man. That, yeah. and, and, and Suburgatory is a cool show if you haven't checked haven't it out. It. It's very... It's it Huluable. Yeah, it is. It's really good. It, it's it's very it's, cool. It's about the uh, so her and her dad used to live in Manhattan, and I guess he found he found a box of condoms in his her room. So she he freaked out and he moved her to this super rich neighborhood in the suburbs called Chadswin, Chadwin, Chadswin, 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 and it is like everything that's wrong with our world is here, like. All the girls have the super like straight hair, and they're just like, yeah, whatever. And everybody's walking around drinking diet energy drinks and like <laughs> driving these massive like uh, suburbans and Escalades, and it's like super rich and catty, and all the all the girls in school like have like the nose job tape on, and it's just <laughs> it's, it, but it's really funny. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, yeah. The the mom in that is. Uh, she's is uh what the was neighbor? Yeah, the na- well there's the the neighbor is Anna Gasteyer. 
who's great, and her husband is Chris Parnell, and they're hilarious. I love. And their their daughter is the girl that was the daughter in Weeds. Oh yeah. That was uh, Celia Hodes' daughter. I forget. It. I don't know. Anyway, she's she's good in it. But the um, the the friend that's the wife that sort of got a crush on Jeremy yeah, Sisto. That's, that's um, uh, she's the little lady from um, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes. That was Larry. Larry's, Larry's wife. wife. Oh, she's what is her really name? Good in it. And the dentist is good. Oh yeah, that's Alan Tudyk. I have a. I, I don't know. I think Alan He's Tudyk like is hilarious. So many things. I, I watched him in. Uh, it, you weren't here. We were talking about the movie uh, Tucker and Dale versus. Oh, that was. Great. I watched that the other night. That Did was. Like yeah. Wasn't that, that was a cool flick? Great. It, it must be some sort of cult where they're killing themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That you know what you know who else is is really good in that I mean because Alan Tudyk but there's another guy who who people are gonna start remembering his name is um the the his friend in that in, is uh Tyler Labine who was the other redneck in the Tucker guy, and the Dale main guy. yeah yeah right yeah, yeah. Tyler Labine he's from Reaper and then he had this short lived network comedy sitcom that I don't know whose name it was but he was great in Reaper and um. He's really funny, and it, it was funny when, when I saw um, uh, we went and saw the Kevin Smith thing. Somebody asked him about uh, Reaper because Kevin Smith directed the first episode of Reaper, and Kevin Smith was saying like, "Oh yeah, I knew then and there that Tyler Labine was going to be he was going to go on to do cool stuff." Mm-hmm. And, and, and Tyler Labine is hilarious. He's great he's in really Tucker and that. Dale. Yeah, that's a great movie. Miley walked in like halfway through it. When I was uh, watching it, she's like, what are you watching? And I told her, she's like, she didn't get it. She didn't, because she get she she missed the whole story that set up yeah. what was happening. And she's yeah. just like, this is yeah. dumb. Oh, yeah, no, Tucker Dale was fun. And Alan yeah. Tudyk was, was great in it. I, like, I don't know. I kind of have a man crush on Alan Tudyk. Yeah. He's I, really funny. Yeah, I love Spurgatory. I love uh, some of the lines like, oh, honey, that's for East Chadwin. Because they only have like like self-serve gas stations and one yogurt shop and yeah. like it's, it's she's southern but it's up yeah. in uh i don't know the, i don't know the actress that plays the the blonde's daughter uh delia yeah, is she, it delia or is it delilah or is delia. It delia like what that ass. either either that actress is really that vacant looking or she's brilliant you, you know what i mean like yeah. I, I don't i can't tell and, and her brother is a- <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a funny show. And the girl, the girl that that's playing, um, what, what is her name? Jane Levy. Jane Levy. Like I, I she's like, fantastic in it because she's so whip smart in it, yeah. and her delivery's right on. She'd make a great ash. You think She'd so? Make, you, oh yeah. So she, so, what do you think about having, um, like I guess, changing pretty much the whole dynamic? If they stick to this, if if the plot is going to be the same as. If it's going to be a true remake of Evil Dead, having a female Ash, I'm all down for it uh, as long as the actor is talented. And and I got you know what? A um, couple years ago, I may have said that's ludicrous. You could never do that. Battlestar Galactica and Starbuck. Holy shit! Starbuck on Battlestar Galactica as a chick was awesome. It was great. Really? That was like one of the best moves of the whole series to make Starbuck a chick. Really? Oh yeah. Same. Oh man. Sorry. I, I mean, I grew up watching the '80s TV show, and you know, and it was right. Dirk Benedict was Starbuck, and you know, he was. I, like, I, I have a vague memory of it, but uh, yeah. I just like the was, robot. Who was Apollo? That was um. No, yeah, you were that's thinking that's of Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers. That's, Buck Rogers, that's right. Yeah. Of. Yeah. All right, now you're all alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because Battlestar had the robot. The, the they were yeah, they were the Cylons. Yeah. yeah. And, and the Cylons are still in it, but um, they look different. The, the originals look way better. Yeah. I don't like well, the in, in the in the original '80s TV show, the Cylon was a man in a shiny suit. In in the new show, it was different in that the Cylons were like CGI'd because they were more robotic looking. Yeah. So it wasn't a man in a suit, or the Cylons looked like people, and then it was just an actor. But we should get back to more just men in suits for monsters. We should yeah. start wearing suits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which reminds me of an idea I had. I gotta tell you. Okay, I hate when he comes up with me. <laughs> are you Are you playing live? We haven't talked about this. Do I? Are you gonna play? No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I can't get uh, the computer to process the vocals fast enough. There's a lag. Yeah. So I hear the sound coming out of the PA system, and I would start to go with it, 
and by the time it gets back through the PCA system and come out, it won't be on time. Huh. So I would need at least a second processor. But in other music news, the uh, Access Monday, the thing that I last performed live, is coming out on the net label Monday or Tuesday on earthmantra.com. And then the other record label that didn't put it out for me, so I went <laughs> to them, emailed me today going, so when are we going to put it out? I'm ready to go. And I was like, I just got an email from the other one last night. Yeah. I gave it the okay. But I have a whole other album that he's interested in putting out and maybe another little thing That's as cool. well. See, there you go. We were just talking about putting your albums out. Oh, yeah. I mean, they put them out. I've still never made anything <laughs> off of them. But <laughs> well, this is where the advertisement yeah. comes in. Hey, but with that being said, I'm incredibly lax on that part. Like, I don't do a damn thing. <laughs> All right, good. So, with this next one, I'm planning to actually apply effort. I'm telling you, you should do a Google artist page. You can sell straight from there. Seventy percent of the profits. Here. Have you done more? Um, but anyway, <laughs> have you done more uh, zombians? Uh, no, I I stopped it at five. I actually have a six one ready. I just need to. I actually made it a long time ago, and and then found it, it was like this would work great because it's you know an hour plus mix. I just need to go through and write down what all the albums are. Yeah, and then put we'll get it on up. that. Jesus I Christ. Should. And I never finished our. I know. Uh, I, know. And I you got, got swamped. And, and I thought the um, I thought I the idea for the, the, the we the, got the video. It's we shot and everything. I it's just, just need I, I tweak the to, audio. Yeah. I thought that was a great I, idea. I, I hit a big spell of work. Yeah, that's like, fine. I mean, damn it. but that's what happens. I mean, we can pick it up. That's what yeah. we do. <laughs> work well, gets in see, the way and of everything. And the thing I started doing the industrial stuff again. It was like I'm over the world ambient stuff. I get because you know if no. You know, when I work on a project like that, it's like what I do. And so by the time I'm done with it and obsessing over it, I'm fucking sick of the genre. And, so, <laughs> and while I'm working on this genre, like everything, not everything, but a good chunk of everything that I listen to, it's referencing that. So I'm just like in this world of only these things for, you know, days or months or however. And then by the yeah. time I'm done, I'm like, fuck this. So... <laughs> So then I switched back over, but now I'm getting tired of that, so I'm back. So, too, so. That, that's what makes it fun. You yeah. might be fickle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have this checklist here. <laughs> now, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but I've talked to, but I play one on a I podcast. Play one. I <laughs> and you meet the criteria of fickle. <laughs> I really wish we had some dramatic music there, like sad piano. Well, you make music. <laughs> like it could be like a uh, Advantix kind of commercial. Or something <laughs> yeah. like this. I don't I've think there's a pill for that, though. This my whole life. Uh, awesome. Oh, this beer tastes sour. <laughs> you know, oh, these peanuts have too much salt. Paul, I think you may be fickle. <laughs> We don't talk about that in this family. We're, we are a family. You may suffer from fickleness. I'm scared. I don't know what you just did. <laughs> you anyway. The guy, like, I got really interested in it, and then I just found something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, earlier this week, I was sent an email through Zombie Popcorn. And in the email, there was a link to a trailer from, um, I think it, it's from South America. I, I, oh, yeah. I was glad you were talking about that. Yeah, um, and it actually looks good. The movie is um, Zombie Dawn. And mm -hmm. we put the trailer up on, on the site. Um, if you want to go see it, zombiepopcorn.com. You know, I'm going to record here and say this movie is going to make zombie fans jump up and down. <laughs> well, it's the funny thing is they, they, sent, they sent me the... Um, the um, the link in the trailer and I was like, all right, I'll, it looks good. I, I actually like the way the trailer looks. It's um, non-American zombie film and or non-US zombie film. It is South America. So I yeah. guess that would be an American yeah. film. <laughs> so splitting hair. Yeah. yeah. But yes. And so I wrote about it and it's not a free America. <laughs> <laughs> and after 
they they sent me the trailer and I wrote about the post. I sent the link back to them and said, "Look, I wrote about it. Thanks for the heads up on this film. Looks great." They sent an email back saying, "Hey, can we quote you?" And I'm like, "Sure." So uh, top it. of their web page now says a quote from what we said in the post: "Zombie popcorn." <laughs> so yeah. we are now. It's what they say. This film will make. Yeah, that the though. quote is. Um, whoops, what am I doing? Um, the quote is, "What did it?" Yeah, it says this film will make zombie fans jump up and down with excitement. I, it is amazing to me that we have clout. <laughs> Weird, huh? But this yeah. this is not the first time we've been on a site, though. Yeah, I mean Quoted. it's cool though. Yeah. It's just like my goal is to see all three of us sitting on one of those rehashed chiller episodes of Thirteen Scariest What the Fuck Ever. You know, yeah, we're just like, something on TMZ. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Chiller Channel does it all the time. Like Spike, thirteen, yeah, thirteen scariest kids. You know, we should like, do our own. We should. We should do it. Totally, why not? I mean, seriously. Oh, I'm, next investment we're doing is the green screen, so we can sit in front of there and have all that shit. Like that. I always, I always like those those shows like that where the guy, you know, when they do like the thirteen scariest, and 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 you know, and they talk to people. Like us, who largely have no credibility or, or qualifications <laughs> right. whatsoever. What do you mean? Or, like, they'll have the editor from uh, Fangoria or Rumor or something. Yeah. Or, or, and, and then they have like a guy whose who's only criteria, he, like he's a stand-up comic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Or like yeah. all those VH1, like best of the 90s. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like, it, and it's always that guy from like, uh, shit, I don't know. What is that show? It's one of the sketch comedy shows. Uh there's always some sketch comedy guy on there that's done. Uh, he did a couple of commercials, and that's it. Yeah, I like I like the, the, the we live in the world where you can have zero qualifications and still be. But as long an as you've been seen enough, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. have any qualifications? Nice. No, no. But I've been on TV. Have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I mean, the when fact Danny that Danny Bonaducci is some yeah. kind of yeah. expert. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the fact Danny that Bonaducci that Bob and I've seen zombie films. <laughs> Italian edition. <laughs> the fact that Bob and I are referenced in a program as experts is pretty awesome. <laughs> in what program? In MarsCon. It's oh, like right, yeah. Expert panelists Jason Bayless and Bob Ryan. Amazing. <laughs> just like, I know. And then people showed up. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so That was weird. It was cool, fun. Cool, but weird. Yeah, it was fun. So we may be doing RavenCon too, but I'm still waiting to work out the details of that. Yeah, I'm down. Be awesome. But anyway, um, so definitely go check out Zombie Dawn. Um, the trailer is up on the Zombie Popcorn website, zombiepopcorn.com. Um, or you can go. Do you think that is? Are they going to plan on giving that a U.S. release, or is it just going to be straight to video? It's going to be straight straight to video. So this yeah. is the uh, Zombie Dawn uh, mysterious mining accident when a remote territory unleashes an unspeakable horror that creates a zombie horde with an appetite for human flesh. It decimates large portions of the country. The only course of action to the rapidly in- is to rapidly enclose infected areas and seal them off from the rest of the remaining living population. Now. Now, 15 years later, the tattered remains of the government and the mining corporation responsible where the initial event took place commit themselves to finding out what have, may have happened at the mining complex. The solution is to send in a group of mercenaries and scientists into the quarantine zone to find the answers. Crossing over is only the beginning. But the trailer looks amazing. Dot, dot, I mean, dot. <laughs> I mean, because I don't think, I can't think of any, I think it's from Chile. Um, I can't think of any South American zombie films. Not come to uh, mind. No. And this one here, uh, the, the production value looks decent. Um, is it there a, is it there a Puerto Rican zombie movie that's going to be out soon? I don't know. It's a Pakistani one that came out a few years ago. Oh, speaking of, we need to do reviews for um, Popcorn Horror. Popcorn Horror. We're due for a review. We'll get on it. Um, th- that's <laughs> all of us. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, all right. Well, what do I got to watch? And all right. Well, we'll watch something other show. I guess. <laughs> I'll do it. This would be a good review if we could see this because it's well, it's not on there, is it? It's not a short film. Yeah. It's okay. full feature. Just... Um, but no, this is this looks really good. Zombies everywhere. The war. But anyway, yeah. 
Zombies. So go, what's the big? Uh, yes. Speaking, Jonathan of, um, Mayberry did a guest post for us. I could tell because the punctuation was perfect on it. The, on his, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was like, this is more cleverly worded than our usual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was that much, was a good interview, guys. I, I listened like to that? that. Yeah, you guys did a good job. Dude, he wrote us and said that he. He's been getting a lot of good feedback from it. Well, and he enjoyed doing it, and a lot of people have left comments yeah, and sent really us messages nice, saying that so. they're, yeah, uh, yeah. I think as that you guys did a nice job, and it was, it was fun to listen to. Depressing as I am, I was like, <laughs> I feel good about it. We, we we did good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is that? What is that glimmer in the horizon? Is it hope? I don't know. <laughs> My heart doesn't feel like it's constricted as much. That's that's because the caffeine's yeah. kicked in. Yeah. <laughs> like a weight has come off my chest yeah. he's he's if fueled so by brief. caffeine and in a profound <laughs> sense of ennui but that's what i love about <laughs> caffeine <laughs> my soul is dead inside i i do love the false sense of hope that caffeine gives you yeah it's, it's, it's delicious good. it is <laughs> but yeah second only to the false bravado of alcohol <laughs> <laughs> thank you red bull and vodka <laughs> There is one thing that I do want to talk about before we wrap up the show because we're getting close to the end. Is I found I'm going to write about this in detail on the site, um, but I want to talk about it because it's actually pretty fucking awesome. Um, there is a camp, you know, like a camp or like kids summer camp where kids go to. It's a it's, LARP camp. It's it's a Nerf camp, but it's Nerf yeah, zombie. It well, first of all, a Nerf camp on its own would be amazing. Yeah. And, and what, what they do they, they teach sword fighting and all this stuff but it's a nerf camp it looks like live action role play yeah it really is but it was nerf that's the whole camp you go and you're you you're that attacked by zombies badass. and they they teach you you know how to properly whatever yeah. and screw all those loser kids that are going to space camp <laughs> yeah I know right <laughs> I went to Who nerf to zombie camp there? but it's awesome because they give you they, they have like chain nerf guns and the videos, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a whole blog about it because I'm just fascinated by it. Um, their website was down or I would have pulled it up before the show. Um, it, it's awesome. They have all these people dressed up in zombies and these kids are running through the woods. Um, <laughs> that is great. They, they have day camp. They have all night camp. And then they have like I a weekend camp, camp. twice for Boy Scouts and I had to work and like learn to weave baskets <laughs> and shit. I've never used any of that. I, I, I went to, I've been to camp for Boy Scouts and I've been to a church camp and none of them. I'm just picturing you at a church. Oh my God, they hated me. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that went over huge. <laughs> well, it went over so well that at the end of it, I had two counselors sit down and go, I'm really shocked, Jason. And the Lord is probably disappointed. <laughs> and he said, you know what? I wasn't part of that plan. Right. <laughs> no, that's what Bob said. He was behind me going, hey. Yeah. Um, I'm an asshole that way. No, they didn't say the Lord was disappointed. I was just kidding. That. Um, <laughs> that, would awesome. that would have been awesome. So I had some friends that they were really into Nerf guns. Mm -hmm. And the they one dude had, it, I don't know, it may have been, you, you made me think of it when you were talking about the, the guns at Nerf camp. It was a. It was like a fifty caliber machine gun. Yeah. Have you seen online where people have hooked up different motors to them? No, no. Oh, so, they, so we're talking about the same gun, right? This goddamn thing was like this big, and it had it had a belt. It was like belt fed. And it had like fifty of those little Nerf darts. That yeah, I'm going to show you this there. photo of it. And it was it was battery powered. It had like a little ammunition yeah. box. That was the coolest goddamn thing. I like. I was over their house and I saw it in the dude's room, and I was like, "Uh, I'm just over here. I'm busy. Uh, nothing going on." And, and, and like, I'm secretly like feeding the belt. I'm like putting it all in. <laughs> and then I like went downstairs and I was like, "Ah, say hello to my little friend," and, and just like shooting. <laughs> it was so if, awesome. If, if you go online, uh, there have been people that have reworked them and put like external motors. And chain these things together so they shoot at an insane pace. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> the, that that fifty cal Nerf machine gun was the coolest thing ever. Like I remember when I was a kid, Nerf meant a soft football. Yeah. And nobody got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> or or the uh, the little suction cup basketball thing. 
and you just have the yeah yeah off. right. Although I had a friend that had uh, the Nerf fencing that yeah was, the little soft Nerf swords. Oh, so awesome, and then it had the guard and mm-hmm. knock the things down. And then a week later, it ended up being duct taped in two <laughs> yeah. places, and it just looked like a... And, and then recalled. Yeah. <laughs> recalled for safety. Look, there's the one with the belt. Look how big that guy is. Ah, oh, that is so cool. Look at the zombies coming in. <laughs> this is camp. Why didn't we have this shit when we were kids? Now, I know, right? There wasn't anything that cool when I was a kid. It's like... Because our parents were forced to grow up. Look at they're playing, and we as parents, people our age, refused to. So, it, but I, what? Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> I'm I'm completely shocked that um, nobody's protesting this or fighting this because they're giving kids guns and encourage them to shoot. You other know what? People. You know, I don't. I need... want that guy to be slapped. Yeah. <laughs> but safely with a nerf. Uh... Safely with a nerf, right? <laughs> Look at that. Because I really don't want anybody hurt. That's awesome. Look at <laughs> that is great. This is the best camp ever. This gonna be counselors. You don't want to? <laughs> yeah. This is something I can get. Yeah, that kid's got that that yeah, nerf machine that. gun. That is that thing was. That, I really think that that nerf machine. That's like the pinnacle of nerf technology. So far. I don't know how it gets <laughs> any better. <laughs> Look. A Nerf Gatlin would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, when you had to like turn the yeah, crank. Yeah. Or or Nerf. Uh, oh man, what are the ones with the the like '30s gangster guns you always see? The Tom Toms. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the Tommy. The Tommy gun. Yeah. Tommy gun. That's the Thompson machine gun. Yep, Thompson machine. We went to. Um, America's Most Wanted Museum in D.C. Mm-hmm. And they had like the, the, the Thompson gun on there. And she's mm-hmm. like, that's my name. <laughs> she was just proud of the gun. <laughs> it's awesome. But anyway, um, so next episode, we're going to be camp counselors. Um, we're going to broadcast live from Nerve Zone. Can you imagine that job expertise too? is needed to, <laughs> yeah. to mold children into responsible. <laughs> like you, some you're gonna, you guys are going to pay me? <laughs> what? <laughs> to play Nerve Zombies with kids? <laughs> They're into it too, and I get to dress up. Let me get. Wait, you're your gonna pay me? Really named <laughs> Crystal. This is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Get the mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should be, be okay so. Lucky. That would be okay there if I walking around with a Voorhees mask on. <laughs> Perfectly acceptable. Yes. With a little Nerf machete. <laughs> <laughs> that, that squirts of blood. Yeah. We could make it. Like that's a job you've been training for your whole life. I, it's yeah. so true. You know how you much blood I have. <laughs> you know how much blood I have in there. I have so much blood in that closet. When I opened it up the other day, one of it leaked, and it's all running down the wall, and it looks so awesome. <laughs> I make a little bit below minimum wage. I get paid what waiters in the state of Virginia <laughs> get paid without tips. But I've never been happier. In my <laughs> right. Life. I was born to educate. I had no idea. <laughs> Holding the panel on the 13 scariest. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. We can do it together. The merit badges we could go. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, this just got serious, people. Yeah. Wow. I know. Like, now I'm like, what merit badges? What do you have? Like, first headshots? Yeah. <laughs> well, just all sorts of things. I got my first Vincent Price merit badge. <laughs> I can name oh all. I God. got the work of. I can name all Vincent badge. Price movies in less than 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> We constructed our own pendulum to torture <laughs> out of safe nerf with the, the, the nerf so <laughs> We reenact nerf pit in the pen. Oh, that'd be awesome. You'd have little nerf pits that look, you know, like graves and they could come out of them, you know, with like little bits. Paul's really That's thought about awesome. this. No, it's just flowing. It's just flowing. It's like a divine channel has been opened. Man, I don't like you have so much fun with that. That's great. Yeah. Nerf and horror together. Why is it never? You know what's funny too is I would bet that that those kids that are in that video that are running around having a great time doing what they love, I bet some of them are getting picked on in school, wrongfully so, and 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 that's because that person is a dummy and is ignorant. Did you see all and, the cosplay? When they, when they when they're older and they're telling their friends about Nerf camp, yes, that sir. same kid's gonna be like. I wish I could have gone to Nerf camp. This I, is at Nerf camp. That's awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Let me show you this. You know what I mean? Like that there, kid. There are like skeletons. That kid's everywhere. out there. Like what? Is, what is it they say in the oatmeal? He's actively cultivating a personality. Yeah. This is at Nerf camp. <laughs> Full body armor. That is so cool. Body Wait. armor crafting survivalist skills. I mean, you could, you could still <laughs> Nerf teach camp. Him. It's like MarsCon, but for kids. <laughs> Man. <Wow. laughs> I am so going to look into that. What is this? This is like Wicker Tree, but. <laughs> <laughs> the Hammer Merit badge. Yeah. <laughs> even, even, that would be even, awesome. even like makeup. Like, oh, I know, right? Teach. I, mean, I, staged, I staged my first decapitation. <laughs> I've never been proud. They're on stilts and everything. Oh, man, that is great. You, you know that's the best weekend. Sound design. There's there's a summer camp, day camp, night camp, and then just right, a weekend kids, camp. We have all the celery. We're gonna make breaking bone sound. Yeah, right. <laughs> you could totally teach kids how to make um sound effects. I know. I saw that too. Yeah. Now we're gonna add in a ketchup bottle. We're gonna record that for the two together. <laughs> there's even camp scholarships. Kids can get scholarships to come. Wow. That's really cool. Wait, wait. Here's employment. They're now hiring. Design. Where's this at? They want people for designing sets. Look. What other employment opportunities? There's overnight. There? There's there's overnight camp nurse. And I'm asking that in a serious. <laughs> way. Like, how far away is it on the east coast? There there's um overnight camp nurse. Do I get per diem? Salary <laughs> salary for the overnight camp nurse is twenty two um two thousand two hundred to twenty seven hundred um for five weeks. Um, the nurse gets one day off each week. Um, for the waterfront director, um, you get anywhere between 2,500 to 3,000 for six weeks. Um, but you must be available January, July 1st through August 12th. Um, then you have head chef food, food manager service, which nah, gets I paid, got no experience there. which gets paid 35 to 4,500. Um, then you have assistant camp director, which is salary range is 2,500 to, um, 3,000. That's for six weeks. Um, then you have summer camp logistics assistants um summer camp counselors um summer camp counselors for the overnight counselors get uh 2000 to 2500 depending on the experience for 6 weeks or or if you do the quest the quest counselor positions you get 1700 um for 6 weeks plus lunch and paid training um and then yeah, so I need to know if they need anybody with engineering skills. Well, for the I guess that would be for the design sets. That blood's not a sport on its own. That's right. They're gonna need something <laughs> what, what with somebody somebody with a knowledge of fluid up? dynamics. Yeah, yeah. for six ketchup weeks, is a non-Newtonian there fluid. It turns out it's a little, it's a little complicated. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's not it's it's uh, it's uh, dilating and thixotropic are the two categories. And uh, it turns out ketchup is dilating. It's not thixotropic. Wow. What would the kids do with that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, doesn't it? <laughs> That'd be your interview. You just walk in. that and po- bipolarized uh, <laughs> circular light, something. It's awesome. And on that note, we're going we're gonna to go out. This was a good show. This is a fun show. It was yeah. fun. And we're going to be camp I don't counselors. Care what, I don't care what Paul says. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good time. I had a Reasonably okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. We'll see you next time. Have a great night. Good night. Good night.